If you know Super Sentai, or more than likely Power Rangers, you're familiar with the concept of the team mech. That oh so toyetic design that comes to life in your favorite series, most of the time via a dude in a suit fighting another dude in a monster suit. There's something undeniably appealing about a giant humanoid robot you can pilot, and today we're going to see just where all that appeal lands. Super Sentai is a series with a very storied history, and with it comes a history of a lot of giant robots. Spanning 45 series from 1979 to current year 2023, I today will be ranking over 200 Super Sentai mecha and combinations. I'm going to establish some slightly loose rules regarding this at first, because once we get to the era of auxiliary mechs, the definition of what I consider a new mech becomes a little nebulous. Everything I'm ranking is going to have a bipedal humanoid design, so that means guys like King Brachian or Revolver Mammoth are out of here. A new combination in my mind results in a fairly radical change to the form, so the many guises of Gao King, or even mechs with specific names like Kyoryujin Western, are off the table. Even mechs that just gain a winged form don't really do enough for me. So, Super Kakurei Dai Shogun, if it's your favorite, if you love Wing Mega Voyager, mea culpa, I apologize. They're harsh rules, but this video is going to be long enough as it is. Taking all that into account, the ranking is going to be based on my opinion, taking both suit and toy aesthetics into it here, really with the toy being more of what sways me. But enough preamble. Let's start ranking some mechs. Here's our tier list here. Let's start here with that first robot. That first mech, mecha, sentai machine, whatever you want to call it, is Battle Fever Robo from 1979's Battle Fever J. It's one of the more unique mechs on the list, definitely. It's very cylindrical, limb-wise and things, compared to, you know, a lot of these mechs are going to end up pretty boxy moving forward here. And the reason for this, Battle Fever Robo does not turn into anything. It's just, you know, the ship Battle Shark just kind of folds open and shoots this dude out here. But he's a very, cuts a very imposing figure. They made a Super Robot Chogokin of him. I wish I could get it. It's probably like $250 now, and I'm a cheap ass. So, Battle Fever J, Battle Fever Robo here. Got a sword, got, like, kunai, got, like, a chain thing that might have to do with the kunai, potentially. I don't remember. I think the kunai is its finishing attack. You just throw it at him and they explode. Uh, shoots the fists out, which is very important for Japanese robot toys from the late 70s for some reason, which I think is a feature... All the way up to maybe Change Robo, maybe Change Robo, Flash King, potentially Bio Robo. I don't know. A lot of them shoot their fists, but Battle Fever Robo, he's going right in A because he's a cool guy. Probably gonna end up on the lower end of A by the time things are said and done here, but that's where he's going. He's the first one. Next, we got Dai Denjin. From Denji Man here, Daiden Zin. Apologies, my Japanese pronunciations are gonna be all over the place. I'm gonna sound very much like an American white dude, which is what I am currently, and I'm also gonna try to force the Japanese sounding syllables coming out of my mouth, so it might be cringy, and I apologize if so. Daidenjin here, he is our first transforming mecha, transforming from a spaceship of sorts, essentially into a big, tall dude with a yellow helmet and a big D on his chest. As far as Daidenjin goes, not a lot to say about him. I'm gonna go B. Not as good as Battle Fever Robo in my mind here, who's probably, like I said, not as good. Gonna end up kinda high B, low A for these first two, I think, in, in how I think this is gonna end up going. Next we got Sun Vulcan Robo. From Taiyo Sentai Sun Vulcan, great series, everyone should watch it, everyone should watch most of these here. Sun Vulcan gets very high praise for being incredibly goofy. You've got Machiko Soga, the lady who plays Rita Repulsa slash Witch Bandora, whatever you want to call her, in an early role here. She's also in Dejiman, I guess, as well, but uh, she's front and center in this one here. Sun Vulcan Robo is the first combining mech in Super Sentai history with Cosmo Vulcan, which is a general spacecraft-looking thing, 
and Bull Vulcan, which is a pair of legs that is very poorly disguised. Doesn't matter to me. Sun Vulcan Robo looks great. I don't think it's quite as good as Battle Fever Robo. Going right behind it here. And that's where... Still a good design. Still a good design, definitely. Goggle Robo from Goggle 5 is our next one here. It is the first of three cone-headed mechs. They decided to do a lot of cone-head stuff for some reason. I think it's a decent aesthetic. I mean, that goes to show it's a jet. It's... I can't remember what the other two pieces are. One's a dump truck. Definitely Goggle Dump. Who could forget Goggle Dump? But it's three pieces total here. It's red. A lot of the Showa era mechs are very blue, so I appreciate that this one's very red. Mostly red with the yellow legs for Goggle Dump. Uh, it's got that weird sort of, we're going to see this all the way up to really the current era of uh, molded lips, a very sullen looking blank expression. I mean, Battle Fever Robo and Daidenjin do have lips as well, but on Goggle Robo you really notice it. Uh, no offense to the guy right now, he's our clubhouse loser currently going behind Daidenjin. I don't know, he's probably, well, we'll see, he's the second best of the Conehead robots, which, the first of which we're gonna see right up next here, which is Dino Robo from Kagaku Sentai Dino Man here. Now, a thing about Dino Robo that I'm going to complain about, even though it is better than Goggle Robo in my mind, the head, the headpiece, the Dino Jet, I believe, it's just the head. When a mech piece just forms the head, I don't love that. It's mixed success, I'd say. Sempujin is the big one that, we'll get there, jumps out to me as one that I don't love the head on, as just the head. Kakurei Dai Shogun, pretty cool. We'll get there. Uh, not as cool as Daidenjin. God, I really like the mouth plate on Dino Robo. Ah, he's going. He's not as not as good as Daidenjin. It's close though. It's close. I like the. It's got like a shark toothy looking mouth plate or a jagged looking mouth plate on there. It's got the visor. It looks great. I think Daidenjin looks great. Bio Robo, on the other hand, from Chodenshi Bio Man here. I don't love. We're back to two pieces for it. Two jets as well. A lot of jets in the Showa era. There, I mean, there, we're gonna. There, a line draws in the sand once we get to G Ranger in 92, where everything's really science based for most of. For the, basically the entirety of the Showa era and the beginning of the Heisei era. Uh, lots of just spacey looking stuff. Stuff not really based on other stuff, if you could believe it. Very descriptive of me to say. Bio Robo. You get the black and red, it's a decent design. I don't love it. I think Bio Robo is probably going to be the first to see in here. Bio Man Fun Series, though. The yellow, yellow four just runs away. The first yellow four runs away after like 12 episodes, and they have to kill her off incredibly quickly, so she gets replaced. So, fun times. She elopes. I believe that's the story. I haven't looked at the... this. <laughs> This is really, it's a really old story. I don't know, I haven't checked and see if there's any actual updates or any research that's been done on it in the meantime. Uh, Dengeki Sentai Change Man with Change Robo has another cone head here and has all of the worst traits of a cone headed mech in my mind. Or at least a Showa era mech where you've got kind of a cone head, it's kind of rounded off at the end. The helicopter piece has the arms kind of awkwardly hunkered underneath it, which I don't like. I mean, we're, I, we're not ranking individual pieces of it, but that always sticks out in my mind as a not great thing for Change Robo. Uh, it's definitely it's going below Bio Robo. It's not awesome. I wish it were. I wish it were better. I haven't actually watched Change Man yet. It's on the list. I've watched a lot of supers. I don't want to throw out my credentials right now. Or anything. More of the show of stuff I haven't seen, but basically everything from. Oh, Jesus. Everything from. Jetman onward, barring two series I've seen at this point, along with Sun Vulcan, Dynaman, Bioman, Flashman, Maskman, Liveman, Turbo Ranger, and Five. We'll get there. Turbo Ranger, I haven't seen this. That's where that one stops. But I've seen a lot of stuff. Change Man, haven't seen yet. Maybe looks a lot better in action. So we've got Flash King from Choshinsei Flashman here, and 
Uh, it's, uh, it's a beloved mech in some respects. It's got a very cool 3D slide gatai system. The toy does. The design, though, it's still just... It's a blue Showa mech. It's just made up of three pretty much anonymous pieces. In my mind, it's like two jets and a... Something or other. I don't know. I, I, I want to like it more. Flashman's a good series. But... I don't know. I think it's... It's not hitting for me. Going below Bio-Robo, because Bio-Robo at least has the cool horn head. I prefer it, yeah. Next up on the list, still in Flashman first series to get a second mech, Titan Boy, who I believe was also used in the Machine Robo line for one reason or another. Titan Robo's red. That's what he's got going for him. I've Again, I watched Flashman. I don't remember a lot. For Titan Boy at all. He's got the pursed lips, weird looking stare. I don't love him. He's definitely less good. I think he's the clubhouse loser right now, currently. Apologies. I'm sure that you're much more well respected in Machine Robo. You just look kind of goofy and awkward. He's a big truck though. That's pretty common too, at least in the next few years. They really like doing mechs that are Mechs that are like 18 wheelers, essentially. So next, we've got Great Titan, which is, in fact, the cab of Titan Boy fused with his trailer. Big Ultra Magnus vibes here, and he is no Ultra Magnus. Uh, Great Titan, first of many boxy mechs that we're going to see along the way, too. Not a lot going on for him here. Don't love him. Probably not even better than Titan Boy. I mean, he's com he's a, he's a big box. I gotta give him points for being a big box. Come on, he's a big box boy. Who doesn't love that? Next, we got the real winner here of the Showa era, in my mind. Great Five from Ikari Sentai Mask Man. The first five-piece robot. It took him very nearly ten years to get a five-piece robo. It's someone went, wait, we could do arm, arm, leg, leg, body, head as five pieces? That's crazy. Great 5 is an absolute S. No question about it. I think about a lot the scene in, I believe, the very first episode of Akiba Ranger where Red sees Great 5 on sale and says, so cheap, so expensively cheap for somewhere along the lines of, I believe, nearly $500. Probably like 50,000 yen or something. And I'm sure that that's only gotten more expensive with time. I'd love to own a Great 5 one day. It's a great looking robot. Galaxy Robo, on the other hand, the second mech from this series, who is another 18-wheeler type, I don't like. This is one where I think the suit kind of actively hampers it. It's got big, goofy chop hands that he also does like a prey pose with. And he's the same, like, red and blue that almost all the other mechs we've seen so far are. So it's a tale of two halves here. I mean, it's a total S. Galaxy Robo's our first D, I think. Galaxy Robo's not good. I don't like him at all. Next, we've got Choju Sentai Live Man's Live Robo, who is the first one with mechs based on. You've got, you know, the Falcon, the Lion, and the Dolphin mechs. The dolphin kind of... I mean, the dolphins are just legs, quite frankly. They're two dolphins next to each other that turn into legs, but I'm not going to hold that against it. I think the, the head is what makes Live Robo weird for me. I don't know if it's the colors, the yellow eyes with the red right there, maybe? I don't know. Do I have a bias against that so far? Kinda. A little bit. I, I like Live Robo. It's probably the best C right now. Live Man, great series. Probably my favorite among all the Super Sentai that I've seen. Live Man's great. Watch it now. From the same series, Live Boxer, a robot that was designed very haphazardly and is a large box, but god damn, I love that he's a large box that punches. He's going... he's going B. He's a little bit better than Live Robo in my mind, just because he's very goofy. He gets, he gets goofy points and doesn't have a weird head. Our first combined form of Live Robo and Live Boxer 
Super Live Robo is absolutely an S. It looks great in my mind. You get the cool helmet. You get the rhino and bison arms in there. Again, Live Robo not designed to combine with anything. So Live Boxer was basically designed out of necessity so the toys could combine. And it's amazing that it went as well as it did considering almost all of the combined forms uh, <laughs> going up to G-Ranger are not great. They are not very good at all. Now we get to Turbo Ranger in 89 here. We're coming to the end of the Showa era. Uh, Turbo Robo looks fine in the suit form. The toy has a very small head for some reason when I look at it. It looks very tiny. And we're back to a five-piece mech here because we skipped it with Live Man, obviously, barring Super Live Robo. For some reason, they decided that two of the mechs on Turbo Robo should be his feet. And <laughs> it doesn't look good at all like the visor though pretty big visor fan i think he's gonna go i still like him less than yeah no he's better than no he's not as good as bio robo we'll put him there next is turbo ruger here rugger whatever you want to call it he's a rugby guy which i think is pretty hilarious i think he i'm assuming he turns into a spaceship i ha i didn't actually look at the transformed form of Turbo Rugger, Ruger, Luger, whatever you want to call him. Uh, but I like, I mean, I like the use of white in there. I think it's a pretty decent design. Better than Turbo Robo, definitely. Better than Bio Robo. The face gives me Galaxy Mega vibes, which that's always a good thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him above Live Robo. That's pretty good. Super Turbo Robo is the picture that they use on Ranger Wiki. Shout out to Ranger Wiki for having these pictures available, but some of them are just really bad. Some of them are so low quality, and Super Turbo Robo might have a lot of that working against it here, because I believe the thumbnail that I got here, where you could see, oh, I don't know, nearly 50% of the mech is probably like 45 by 45 here. Uh, the combined form doesn't look great. This is absolutely... This is absolutely a C. Maybe even a... Mm, I wouldn't call it so bad as a D. It's better than Great Titan, not as good as Flash King, not as good as Change Robo. It goes right there. That's where that guy lives. Now we've got Super Turbo Builder, which is a base Robo, and he's a big block. He's a big, wide block. I can't even see his face in the picture that I used here. But again, a big wide boxy boy, much like Live Boxer. He gets the Live Boxer treatment. He's he's going B. He's going B. I think that Turbo Builder is pretty cool here. Chiku Sentai Five Man, 1990. Five Robo has got to be the most uninspired Sentai mech design. I mean, potentially you could see this coming because it shares a lot of design similarities to Galaxy Robo. The series is called Five Man. It is made up of three pieces, which is not at all acceptable. I can't be doing with this. You gotta be kidding me, dude. He looks terrible. He's got a blue face. So you, which is, is that something that he only shares? He only shares that with, with Galaxy Robo. It looks terrible. It doesn't, like, Five Man barely has a theme. They're Earth Sentai Five Man. They're defending Earth. Five Robo is made out of a jet. A, like a land cruiser and a a buggy, maybe? It has almost nothing going for it. Absolutely worse than Galaxy Robo. It's possibly the worst of the bunch here. And Star 5 isn't much better. The next one here, at least it's got a faceplate. Star 5 turns into an anonymous spaceship. That's it. <laughs> He's red, I guess, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think, I mean, I like him better than Titan Boy, I guess. I guess I like him better than Titan Boy, because Titan Boy's got the weird face. He's got the face plate here. He goes there. That's where he's going. Super 5 Robo is barely any better. Even seen it in motion in the episodes currently that I'm watching here, so I've gotten up to that point. Super 5 Robo is not great, either. I'd put it above these two, above Five Robo and Galaxy Robo, but it's still a D. Max Magma, on the other hand, 
which is of course the five man's magma base as we all know as everyone as all our five man maniacs out there know for sure and even boxier than turbo builder can barely move apparently they only use it twice in the series and this the episode where they used it the first time i just watched today uh i don't love that you need to not that you need to store super five robo inside it but i i don't get it you don't need to do that we see that a few times here where you just put another thing inside the robot and hide it completely and somehow that gives it more power. I'm sure it can stand up on its own without Super 5 Robo in there. Either way, uh, I like this boxy guy. I like him even more than Livebox. I like him more than Goggle Robo. That's where he's going. Next we got Jet Icarus, 1991's Chojin Sentai Jetman here. Jet Icarus is has similar design issues to many of the robots we've seen so far. Very boxy. It has that weird expression. It's got the big gold bird on the chest, at least, which is a nice touch for it. Still doesn't really get it out of C, in my mind. Not as good... Better than Bio Robo, not as good as Live Robo. Jet Garuda, on the other hand, is a big bird man! He transforms again. I mean, he transforms into a big ship and can combine with the other flying-based vehicles to make an even bigger ship. But he's got a bird head, which is something that you don't see too often ever in any of these mechs. That's just a straight-up bird head. <laughs> We've got like bird head elements certainly in some of them, but he's shooting straight up to A, going behind Sun Vulcan Robo. What a good design! But unfortunately, I mean, Great Icarus, I like it. It still has the problem where I don't like Jet Icarus's face. And the face is still there. You don't get, like, you know, we'll see in future instances of, like, a visor covering the eyes or something. Or even that, like, we've seen currently with even Super 5 Robo in places. Uh, it still looks pretty imposing as a combined form. Probably still... I'm I'm going low B for Great Icarus. It needs to split the difference between Jet Icarus and Jet Garuda. Tetra Boy transforms into a four-barrel gun, which is pretty cool. That's a pretty neat thing that Tetra Boy can do. He's also, you know, red, blue, yellow, and uh, has a kind of circular head. He doesn't look great. He's probably... He's going... He's going below. He's going below Change Robo, I think. And we finally... We've gotten to... We're starting to push stuff down here. So... I didn't think C was going to be this big, quite frankly. I don't know how much more we're going to use C moving forward, but... Alright. I mean, I don't think I need to say anything about Daizujin. It's great. He's going top of the pops right now. For now. For now. The design's iconic. It's unlike any of the other Sentai mechs that we've seen so far. I mean, he's closest to Battle Fever Robo, I guess. But also made of five parts. I don't even hate that the Pteranodon is just a chest plate. I don't even hate that. I think that's, that's pretty neat. Not a ton of other Sentai mechs do that either with the chest plate. I think it's great. I think it's great. I mean... What do you want me to say? It's great! Dragon Caesar! Alright, I might be breaking my rules a little bit here because Dragon Caesar doesn't technically transform into any... I mean, he does, sort of, but it's like... He can walk around. He's bipedal, which Revolver Mammoth is not. And Dragon Caesar is... Oh, man. Is he Clubhouse Leader? I do like Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla and... I like the drill. He's got a drill tail. Come on, man. He's got a drill tail, dude. He's a big Mecha Godzilla with a drill tail and missile fingers, and he's great. It's awesome. I wish Go Eugene was as good as the sum of its parts, as most of Dai's Eugene and Dragon Caesar here. Uh, I still like him. I still like him a lot. He's got the staff. 
he's he's top of B right now, I think. Not good enough to be A. I really like the middle chest symbol that's, you know, close to the Dragon Ranger logo. Something about the face. I mean, it's it's I went on the terror before where I like a visor. Visor's too big. Maybe the visor were a little smaller. His eyes are gigantic, quite frankly. Most of his face is the visor, and I don't love that. Zute Daisujin is stupid. Is really dumb. <laughs> it's Daisujin wearing Dragon Caesar as a hat. I might be speaking out of bias here, because, I mean, obviously I'm not rolling in the dough. So the versions of these toys that I have are the Power Rangers Legacy versions, and the fact- I love the fact that they use die-cast metal. I'm not gonna fault them there, but Dragon Caesar's feet are die-cast metal, and it makes it seem like I'm gonna completely break- I'm gonna snap the knees of my Legacy Megazord every time I put them in this formation. So, he's absolutely... He's going D, honestly. I can't put him below either of those guys, but I just do not like that form at all. No ultimate Daijujin here. It is basically, it's the same guy standing in King Brachian who doesn't turn into anything else. He's got guns. So, we're going to be avoiding things like that. Apologize if ultimate Daijujin is your best boy. Not going to put him in here. We got Ruseo now from Die Ranger which we have a few of these here which honestly he's a high a he is even better than battlefield robo i think i think that's fair i think that's fine let me scroll down a little bit here so you can actually see d because we're not gonna be using king super best i don't think not for a while so you can see that i actually put zute daijujin in here and i apologize for any white bars that are going to show up too here i didn't do this perfectly Dyreno is awesome. I think he's better He's better than Ruseo, because it's this one is better than the sum of its parts. You get the Heavenly Key Palace in there, all the guys, the lion, I almost called him a bear, the black thing, the green thing. I love him. I think Dyreno is going right up top of A right now. Helmet's great, basically sunglasses, cool sword. I, I don't hate that the phoenix is a skirt. I don't even hate that. I think it's great. I mean, we're hitting a lot of high notes with Dyer here because Wan Tiger is great too. I think Wan Tiger is probably even better than Yuseo. Yeah, I'm putting... I don't think he's better. I think he's put, he's going right there. Wan Tiger is awesome. I don't love Kiba Ranger in Die Ranger. He's a kid. He's not Tommy. I don't love Tommy a lot either, which is probably controversial to say. I like him. I like Tommy just fine. R.I.P. Jason David Frank, by the way. Uh, but he's he's better than a snot-nosed punk kid who loves sexually harassing Hoa Ranger. Little brat. And Kiba Dio, I think, looks even better than Yusei-O. So you get almost the best of everything here. I mean, you're whatever combination you want to go with here with putting all the key palace dudes on you say or one tiger you're gonna get cool stuff either way here i like using i don't know what did they call this the white tiger thunderzord in the power rangers fighting game really enjoyed that love that the phoenix gets to be just like an arm pokey that's really cool play that game that's a fun game it's based on some gundam engine i think it's really cool don't use the code for Ivanus to play as Ivanus. He's too cheap. Daimugen is a big turtle man who stands up. I wasn't... <laughs> I wasn't even going to put Daimugen on this list because I forgot that he was even... That he did, that he had this form. Stood up. He's got a little face with a red visor. Oh, man. He's not quite A. I think he's probably better than Max Magma. Max Magma's got a face, though. A cool face. That reminds me a lot of Die Voyager. Which we'll get there, certainly. Nah, The fact that he's a turtle puts him above Max Magma, I think. That's what it's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's gotta be that. Next, we're already in Cocker Ranger. 
We have already hit 1994, and Muteki Shogun is potentially King Super Best, quite frankly. Muteki Shogun is my favorite design, potentially of all 47 Sentai series, of all 200 mechs we're hitting it this early, maybe, potentially. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, it's... He's a man made of castle men with an origami crane helmet. Don't even mind that he has a blue face. Looks great. My biggest complaint with Mutiki Shogun is that all of his appearances in Cocker Ranger are, I'm going to say, 85 to 90% stock footage. They filmed a, a, a collected total of maybe three minutes with the suit throughout the series. But I'm not going to let that put me down here. I love Kakarai Dai Shogun. I think it's great. I don't know if I want to put him in S, is the thing. Is it better than Kiba Dayo? Is it better than Dai Reno? I think it's... The thing that I don't love about Kakarai Dai Shogun is the fists, I guess. And the finisher in the show is just a punch. Like, I, I haven't really brought that up. Finishers that are just punches. Super 5 Robo's finisher is a fast punch. Kakurai Dai Shogun's finisher, you put Tsubasa Maru on him, the Falcon Zord, whatever you want to call him on the back. It's just a punch. It's a punch, and it flashes a weird image of a gorilla and a wolf. That's gonna put him down still better than Battle Fever Robo, I think. Not quite as good as the Dai Ranger Boys. Still very good. Still a very good series. Don't have Ninja Man on here. Apologies. Don't have Tsubasa Maru, as I said, combined with uh, both versions of this, because it's, it's almost the same. Oh, Ranger Robo. Oh, man. Oh, Ranger Robo is an S, definitely. Where does it go, though? I love the engineering on Oh, Ranger Robo. I love the head swap gimmick on him. Oh, Ranger is not a great series, but if there's one thing that Oh, Ranger did right, it's the designs. All of these have are pretty much A+, plus in my mind. I, I'm going to put Oh, Ranger Robo a Above Great Five, I think. Not quite as good as Daijujin, but very close. Daijujin is almost coasting on its legacy here, which I can't fault, but yeah, Orange Robo, right, it's it's basically neck and neck. Red Puncher, something about the designs of the Orange helmets that I love. Just a giant star as the visor. It transfers to Red Puncher here, which I think is great. He's a punch boy. Uh, still probably high A in my mind, or even mid A. Uh, I, God, do I like, I don't like Red Puncher as much as Kakarai Dai Shogun. So it's going there. No offense to it. I don't, I, this is one of the ones that I forgot in my initial list here. I don't love Buster or Ranger Robo, which I understand it's, basically it's the Tsubasa Maru principle where, I mean, instead of wings, you do get a different helmet. You do get giant shoulder cannons, which I I think it's only in here because I like giant shoulder cannons. Still mm, better than Daidenjin. Not as good as Daidenjin. Not as good. Yeah, I think that seems right. Change Robo. Or no, I'm sorry, Dino Robo. A little bit better. I should have Nostalgia for Tackle Boy because it is the first... Power Rangers toy that I owned, but it is just a wheel that pops up into a footballman. Which is unique. I'll give it that. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not as good as Genicarus. I think that's fine. <sighs> O-Blocker is so good. I love O-Blocker. A lot of people probably don't like the big shapes on there. I'm a complete sucker for flat primary colors, which I guess is why Sentai appeals to me in general. The head's great. He's got two swords. You've got all of the... all the shapes in there. It's not as good as Muteki Shogun, but it's very close. It's very close. I think, I mean, I have a fairly sizable collection, not to toot my own horn, of toys now. And I'm going to mention toys a lot. I apologize if, if that gets annoying. This was the first one that I got was O-Blocker because I remembered it 
so far. I just love that design so much. It was the very first one, and then I ended up selling that one and getting another in pretty short order. So for a short time, I had two O-blockers, which is more than I could say of any of these other mechs on this list at any point. King Pyramider... Uh, is he's a giant box? He's a giant stood-up pyramid with shoulder cannons. That's gotta be an A. From a design state, that's better than that's better than Red Puncher, but not as good as actual robots with more kind of design philosophy put into them than just the base that holds the stuff. So on that principle, can't do that, but definitely a high A. Probably the best. Probably the best. I mean, it depends on what we want to classify as a boxy boy, which. Once we get up to mechs that fit other mechs inside them, I do enjoy on some level. As long as the combined form doesn't also involve them being, th those robots being hidden, which I think that most of Orange Robo is hidden in this form of King Pyramider. Doesn't matter, you can make it with just King Pyramider and Red Puncher. No one's gonna look behind it and see like, oh, oh where's, where's Moa Loader and Dogu Lander and Dash Leon and whatever the bowl is called. Where are they? Where are they? No one's going to see that. Doesn't matter. Car Ranger, we got RV Robo. I like RV Robo. Uh, I don't love RV Robo. The finisher's great. The spinning finisher. I never, I've never owned an RV Robo. I definitely like to. If I want to own the toy, I feel like it should rank pretty high. But generally, from a design standpoint... Probably not even as good as Turbo Rugger, quite frankly. The transform the like the combination sequence is great, which earns it a lot of points, I think. Yeah, you'll put him above Turbo Rugger for that. I love I love good stock footage combination sequence with miniatures and everything. The fact that you just you slam on the brakes and RV Robo stands up as a result and the head pops out. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, the picture that they used for Sirender, our boy Signal Man's robot is not great on Ranger Wiki. Its visor is not down. It looks like a metal hero currently. It looks like fire from Wind Spectre, looking like that, with the visor flipped up and you can see the metal hero's eyes underneath. Sirender's a big, bubbly police car. I don't love the proportions on it. Like, the there's so many... <laughs> being also, you know, having spent a lot of time with Transformers, there are so many Transformers who do this look better so for that it's not quite as good as rv robo i do love S signal man in general kind of is making him even this high i think vrv robo is the proper the first proper megazord that i remember owning or the i think it was just called the rescue megazord uh for turbo and i'm not sure why because i don't remember watching a lot of power rangers turbo I was out at that point, I think, but it was still a toy that I have a lot of fondness for. I love the Ark and Car Ranger where they get it. I love, I love VRV Master. It's slightly better than RV Robo, I think. That's kind of where we stand with this. I don't love the Vic Trailer, however. This you could store all the Victory Ranger vehicles inside it. He's, kind, he's tall and wide. Something about it doesn't quite click for me like the other ones. Maybe it's because you got to stack the pieces. We're kind of sticking in C, I think, for this here. Am I being... Man, am I being too harsh on C? On a lot of these? Like, C is getting way bigger than I thought here. I like it more than Turbo Robo. I don't like it more than Bio Robo. That's where Vic Trailer's going right now. Galaxy Mega is great. This is another one that I owned as a child. Again, why am I telling you? You don't care. Galaxy Mega, two pieces. First one with electronic sounds, I believe. Red Puncher had electronics in it. I don't think it had any sounds, though. Uh, light and sound on this. Uh, uh, a staple of Max to come. Certainly great design. The giant M in the middle. Space shuttle and everything. Uh, Galaxy Mega is definitely an A. Better than Jet Garuda. Sorry. To the bird boy. Delta Mega is a very unique looking robot. He's got the machine gun spinny fingers, which I... are great. Does it raise it any bigger than a B, though? Delta Mega... 
still great. Better than Max Magma, better than Time Mugen, definitely better than Buster or Ranger Robo. Yeah, I'm putting them right there. Delta Mega's really good, and Super Galaxy Mega is in the S tier. It is better than Great 5. It might be... It might be my favorite of two combined mechs. I mean, we're still... We're still... We are at the one-fourth point at this point, so... That can definitely change, but I have... I got the mini-pla of... Galaxy Mega and Delta Mega. It's always in Super Galaxy Mega form here, with good reason. It's got shoulder cannon, shoulder guns, shoulder gatling guns. Awesome. Simply, it's great. It's wonderful. It's a great design. I like Mega Voyager. I like that one of the pieces of it is a big shuttle rocket. I love that. As far as, like, a more traditional five-piece robot in Mega Ranger, I feel like it goes kind of forgotten. I still think it's a B. I think, I think it's a high B. I think it's the highest B right now. I do like Mega Voyager a lot. Mega Winger 2. The only thing... I love Mega Silver. Mega Silver is great. I'm just going to keep saying I love. I love, I love, I love, I love. It's going to... By the time we get to the end of this century, it's going to turn more into me going, eh, a lot, so <laughs> deal with my my shameless pandering for 90 Sentai, because ev basically every Sentai from the 90s, from 91 to 2000 at least, five man again, meh, so far, very average, but everything from Jetman to Time Ranger are like eight or nine out of tens as far as series go. All of them available to stream on Shot Factory TV. Shameless plug for Shot Factory TV. Mega Winger, though. Wish it were silver, I guess. It's it's mostly white. It's got a good design. It kind of has a look like Time Robo Shadow, Alpha, and Beta, which we'll get to. But uh, I like it more than Great Icarus. I like it more than... I like it more than Goggle Robo. I'll put him below Max Magma. Max Magma's cool. Do I put King Gaio in an S? I do love King Gaio. He's really good. Which is weird because we're gonna get to Gao King, and I don't like Gao King that much. Uh I have a real fondness for King Command. It is one of my favorites. Which I'm gonna I'm gonna say about every, a lot of series, really, but Ginga Man has something about it that is really cool. It's got great aesthetics. It might be, it's like the last series without a ton of CG. You get some CG in this, you get more CG in GoGo5. And then by the time it hits Gal Ranger, it's just all CG and it's terrible. Not all, all CG, but you know, most of the stuff. No more miniatures. Again, I'm gonna tout that I love miniatures and how they all kind of come together. But Gingayo is an S. I love the way the combination works for it. The fact that Gingalcon, the green falcon on the back of it, is just like you can kind of see its its feet in the waist, right next to the gorilla head. Love that. Bull Taurus is definitely an A. Definitely an A. Where is he going in A? Where is Bull Taurus going? Where is Bull Taurus going? I like him more than you say, oh. I don't know if I like him more than Ron Tiger, though. Bull Taurus is going there. Love me some Bull Taurus. We're gonna have to scroll down a bit again here so I can move mechs over. So I apologize that, you know, S is gonna be out of the way for a while here. Uh, if there are weaker aspects of Ginga Man, it's the two Giga Rhinos and Giga Phoenix here. Uh, Giga Rhinos, I like. I don't love. I like it more than RV Robo, but not as much as VRV Robo, I'd say. Giga Phoenix, kind of similar. They are almost a package deal. Uh, I'd never had the Giga Phoenix toy, so I can't really speak to how it combines or how it kind of all comes together. So I'll put it below RV Robo because of that, because I don't love putting stuff near each other. Victory Robo's an S. It is one of the best. Oh god, do I like it? I love Victory Robo. 
The combination sequence is great on it. It's a good use, like, as far as vehicle mechs go, you can see that I don't love a lot of vehicle mechs, but the way that this one all comes to, like, the, the fact that, you know, they took the time to do the thing with, like, the magnets for the the green gyrocopter to, like, to, like, lift the fire truck up onto the other formation here. I'm going to put him below a blocker, I think. It's still very close to me. I'm going to be doing a lot of scrolling here because GoGo5 has some of the such good mechs. It's a good series. It's kind of forgettable in some places. I mean, I like it a lot. I love it. I, I think Grandliner's going all the way to the top. Grandliner's definite candidate for King Super Best because... He, the toy is gigantic. It can fit the Victory Robo machines inside it, which is amazing. It's five trains. I love trains too. I'm not a I'm not a big train guy. I, I like I mean I'm not a guy who's into you know Lionel trains or train sets or anything. But the aesthetics of trains. I live near a train museum for most of my life. Shout out to the Steamtown National Historic Site. Love trains. Even more than I love Mujeki Shogun, which is potentially an upset. Liner Boy on his own is weird to me because he does have the visor that makes him look like he should be part of Mega Ranger. That's a little weird. He is a space shuttle, a solar powered space shuttle, uh, and it has a conscience and is technically the sixth member of the team, which I don't love and don't remember them coming back to too much. Uh, it's probably a B for Liner Boy. Probably gonna go... No, below Delta Mega, below Max Magma, below the Mega Winger. Below Goggle Robo. He's holding a B there, then. Max Victory Robo is a great combined form. I don't know if I'd like it more than regular Mac Victory Robo, though. Oh, man. Uh... I'll do a lot. I'm, I, I'm gonna put them between Dragon Caesar and Victor. I'm gonna put a little bit of space between them here. I keep my Victory Robo toy in Max Victory Robo form. It looks great. A regular Victor. I think regular Victor Robo is probably a bit better, but it's still a great design. I love the helmet on it with the with the M. So you know that he's Max Victory Robo, of course. Victory Mars, I remember mostly as being very CG when they used it. So, in a series with lots of great miniature, I mean, it's 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 a bunch of space vehicles. What are you gonna do? He's got a weird boxy face, which I don't know is a side effect of the CG of the era. Still very good looking. I'd put it about on par with Mega Voyager. Probably a little less good than Mega Voyager. We get to Time Ranger here. I like Time Robo Alpha. This one is, I was just going to say Time Robo, but there is a difference, and they are on. They, both versions are on here. Time Robo Alpha is kind of generic looking. Time Ranger, I believe, has some of the lowest toy sales in Sentai history when they started tracking these things, at least. Uh, and you can kind of see why. There's not a ton going on with it. Time Ranger, though, great series, potentially one of the best of the decade, which I have said about five different series so far. Probably a B. I like the design. The toy... <laughs> I had a toy of it that the limbs were all very loose, which I don't think is a common thing. I like it more than Daimugan. I'll put him above Daimugan. The concept, though, of one robot that can be two things, I really like. Time Robo Beta has, because of, you know, how you how it all kind of comes together, you end up with a weird body type for it. It's kind of spindly looking. It's very shouldery. It's got giant shoulder pylons. Uh, I like the blue face. I like It's just for the uniqueness. It's kind of got... It's better than Delta Mega. Not as good as Delta Mega because Delta Mega has machine gun fingers because come on now. Something about Time Shadow I don't love. The toy is very wide. The toy is all shoulders. They, of course, <laughs> did not make it quite as much on the costume for it, the suit. Uh, still, though, he's he's the ninja stealth bomber, which you gotta love. That's at least good enough to be better than 
better, better than Turbo Builder. At least a little bit better. Time Robo Shadow Alpha does look cooler than regular Time Robo Alpha. Uh, if only for the sunglasses that he gets here. And we've seen this before with like Super Turbo Robo where you're standing on a piece of something. Which is true of both of these, I believe, here. Where they're just kind of propped up on a long piece of time shadow. Which doesn't look awesome. Still not going to ruin the aesthetics for me. Better than Buster Ranger Robo. Even better than Time Robo. I'd, I'd put him, you know what, I'm going to put him between... Dino Robo and Didengine here. And even then, Time Robo Beta, same kind of deal. I'm going to put it just a little bit higher there. That's where he goes. And V-Rex Robo. I have a problem with toys that transform themselves and, like, the voice-activated thing and everything with V-Rex Robo. The design is great. He's got the missile hand. It's not a toy I would want to own, I don't think, because it does... It's, in order to get all the mechanics in there, it's very unwieldy, it's very, like, wide. I don't love it, but the suit is too good for me to not put it at least in B. Pretty high in B, below Gogeo Jin. Let's move on to Gao Ranger here. We got Gao King first. I said before I don't love Gao King. It's still a good design. I'm salty because... The transformation sequence is all CG, and it's not good CG. I mean, the CG in <laughs> Toku series doesn't rise above a certain level, uh, that level being bad. Uh, overall, fine design, I guess. He's got a lion for a chest, which I think is always worth some points. Uh, Gao King... Maybe I don't love him. Better than Live Boxer! Uh, I think it's kind of lazy to when the shark and the tiger are just hands. And, it, I mean, it's better than what they do with Kakurei Dai Shogun, and they just kind of slip covers over the face of the wolf and the gorilla on that one. And in this one here, you know, the shark is just the shark, and the tiger is just the tiger, and those are the hands. And, I don't know, I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. That'll happen occasionally. Gal Muscle is better designed. I mean, the arms match because they're both just, you know, it's the black bear and the uh, polar bear, I guess. Do I like Gal Muscle better than Gal King, though? It uses the same legs, I believe. Full disclosure, Gal Ranger is one of the only post-2000 series I have not watched. It is. I've gotten like 14 episodes in twice and it is just, it's a little, it's a little boring. I can't get into the team that much. I'll watch it eventually, because I'll watch everything eventually, but... Gal Muscle... I'll put it a little more than Gal King. Not a big, I'm not a big monkey man. I'm not a monkey man. Don't love monkeys, but I think that it, it looks decent for Gal Muscle here. Gal Hunter is pretty cool. He's got a giant crocodile head for a chest, which we talked about the lion head for a chest before. The crocodile head, I think can go forward or down in this image. I think it's forward, which I am pretty sure that's not how the toy normally does it, because it would stick out pretty far. Uh, Gal Silver seems like a cool guy. I don't think I ever got to him in the series. I'm still not putting him anywhere above B. Better than Great Icarus, I think Gal Hunter is. We can just... We can just... There we go. There he is. There's the guy. Next... Uh... Gower Gris is probably the coolest of them. I mean, we'll see Gaugan in a minute here. Uh, the wings on it being gigantic, and it's got, like, the eye pattern is pretty cool. I'm actually, I'm going to put Gower Gris below the Rex Robo, I think. I'm really just going off of aesthetics here, because I have not seen these ones in motion. I'm sure there's a lot of Gow Ranger fans out there. I don't know if the consensus is that Gow Ranger is boring. Feel free to watch it, Chat Factory TV. Again, it's there. Watch all, watch fifty, watch fifty episodes. Pause this video, watch fifty episodes. Come back to me and let me know how Gal Ranger is and if it's worth putting some more time into. Because I'm sure I will eventually anyway. Uh, Gal God is aesthetically really cool. I think it's the same pieces essentially as Gal King, 
uh, just with different colors. Like, you know, you kind of got a, it's like a, like a deep brown, kind of, as the main color of it. It's got a cool face. It's called Gao God. It's got to be better than Goryujin for that, I think, right? At least. Even though I said Gao Icarus was the best, here we are. It's not. And we're going to start getting into movie-exclusive mechs. Gao Knight is a, is a better version of Gao Muscle, definitely. Don't like it as much as Mega Winger. I mean, it's got the shield and the sword, and it's... I mean, hey, it's a knight. Why not? Pretty cool. I feel like we're going to be putting a lot of... B is going to get a little bloated in this run. It's going to take a little while until we get to the really, really good stuff again, I think. Maybe. It, maybe until Decker Ranger. We'll see. Uh, I complained about Sempujin before. We're in Hurricane now, of course. Goodbye to Gal Ranger. Sempujin is a toy where, as I said, it's it's made up of three pieces. So much like Dino Robo in that way, where the head is one tiny little piece. The lion does seventy five percent of the work. It's the entire body and one of the arms. And the dolphin is the other arm. So it loses a few points for me. It's still, I mean, the head is cool looking. It's got a pretty striking design. It's probably still in B somewhere. Hurricane is a bit of a mixed bag for me. I did watch it with Hong Kong subtitles, and it does have official subtitles at this point. But it's not a series that I liked enough to, to watch more than once, at least, you know, before I watch other important stuff. I'm going to put them a little below Dino Robo here, just because I, you know, they, ha they have similar complaints in my mind. Let's see, what do we got next here? Go Raijin is really cool. He's a bug. He's a bug boy with the Go Rigers. The Go Rigers are a pretty cool concept. They got a cool bug mech. Apparently this one's prone to breaking. Like, the clips on it aren't great. But it's, it's, it's black, it's a maroon and a deep blue, and it's the classic Japanese Kabuto Beetle and Stag Beetle, your Kabuto and Getak combo, your Buster Hercules combo. Goraijin, Goraijin's going above Victory Mars. I do like it here. We're going to start seeing... Well, I say that, but uh, it's not really the case in Auto Ranger. We're going to see a lot more combined forms starting here with Gorai Sempujin here, who I like that the lion because again, I you know I'm not going to fault a lion on a chest. It's probably the most put together of all the Hurricane Dream mechs because when we get to Tenrai Sempujin, it's <laughs> it's a little bit of overkill. I love a messy giant combined form. And really, Tenrai Senpujin is probably one of the better looking of them, but I'm gonna put Gorai below Jet Garuda. Let's give Jet Garuda a little bit of breathing room so we know that he's gonna... so that he's not at the bottom of the A tier, because he is a cool dude. After this, we got Tenkujin, who... love Shuriken Jir. Shuriken Jin is the mech. Shuriken Jir is the guy in Hurricane Jir. Uh, and Tenkujin is his big bird helicopter with the giant ninja star chest, the giant shuriken chest. I like the visor on it. Uh, it's a bit awkward in terms of, uh, proportions, I guess. Still cool looking, still green. Big fan of green. Let's put him above Gal God. I think that's fine. I think that looks good there. And then here we are, like I was saying, Tenrai Senpujin. Uh, maybe I just don't like this one as much because you don't have the lion on the chest anymore. Is that going to be my big issue with this? I'm going to... I'm going to... He's not as good as Mega Voyager. A little better. A little less good. I mean, all the Hurricane Dream mechs are kind of ended up in the same general area. They're inoffensive, I'd say. They're fine. Uh, oh, we're on to Abba Ranger and Abba Reno, where I do love a drill arm. I mean, the drill is basically the entire arm, which is not as good as mechs we'll get to later, like Gojujin, which it has 
like a forearm drill, which is better. You get a little bit more articulation out of it. Uh, the Tyrannosaurus is doing a lot of the heavy lifting again here, much like Zenfujin. It's the entire body, the head, the left arm. The Triceratops is the right arm, and the uh, Tyrannodon is basically a crest. Where does Abareno go? Abareno is less good than Delta Mag. I think better than. Better than Time Robo Bait. I'm gonna move Sempujin. Sempujin's. I didn't notice Delta Mega there. It's definitely not as good as Delta Mega. It's definitely less good. I'll put it not even above Time Robo. I'll put it above Max Magma, I guess. So apologies to the Sempujin fans. I'm moving them down. Because I'm not paying enough attention to what's in the next row. Next, we got Killer O. Killer O's going to C, I'm pretty sure. I really like Operate Killer. I think everyone does. He's a cool dude. He's a, right in that, like, 2003 edgy, just, like, really a dick for no reason. Just a complete jerk for 99% of the series, actively working with the bad guys. Killer O should be much cooler. Yeah, I... I Man, where am I going to put Killer O? I think it's it's worse than Live Robo. Better than Jet Icarus. We'll put them there. He deserves better. We got Max Oja next here. I don't love the, you know, like the chariot thing being pulled by the Styracosaurus. Eh, I mean, it's kind of cool. He's got a big hat. I'm a, I'm, yeah, I'm a sucker for a mech with, with a tall hat, I think. Uh, you know, come back to me when we talk about Magic King, though, and I'm gonna go the other direction there. Uh, Max Oja is better than Killer O, I think. We're still in C. Probably better than Giga Phoenix. Not as good as RV Robo. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it right now. Next we got... Oh, what is the name of this one? Max... Max Ryu O. I barely remember. I don't think this showed up too much in the series. Abba Ranger is a series that I'm. that I liked. Abba Ranger is a fine series. Definitely worth a watch. I don't like it as much as Max Oja, though. He's got a cool weapon. I think all of the all of the Abba Ranger toys are all kind of hampered by their like action gimmicks. Like they all have batteries in them. Abareno, you know, you turn it on and the drill spins. The spines move on the Stegosaurus for Killer O. This one, I think, like, the wheels spin and it kind of, like, moves forward. Not as good. Putting it below Turbo Rugger. Turbo Rugger, a name that has been popping up a lot here. Cool guy. Maybe I will like Turbo Ranger when I watch it. Who knows? We're on Bakureno here who is, I think, much better than Abareno. I think it's just the blues on it. You got, he's ice-themed, he's an ice dinosaur, dark blue, light blue. I'm even putting him in A, I think. Bakareno looks, I'd much prefer it to an Abareno. I like the helmet better. I'm putting him even above, above Jet Garuda. That should be fine. We're at 2004 now. Decoranger Robo. I... Love Decoranger. It's a great series. Decoranger Robo is a little too wide, <laughs> proportionately. Uh, I don't. The ambulance looks like it's a, like a like a clown car, like a bounce house car, or something. Like you bounce directly off it if it ran into you, or you ran into it. But I'm not gonna let that sour me too much. It's got. Great gimmicks with the green, whatever the name of that vehicle is. It's not the Pet Striker is the only one I can remember, really. Uh, but, it, you know, you kind of slide it out and you can have the gun and the sword in there. Uh, it's got a lot of cool gimmicks. So it's still going to be high B. Still going to be high B. Deca Base Robo. We're getting back to, like, a big... I mean, I guess Max Oja is this too, this similar thing of like a big base boy where, now I kind of wish I had this toy because I'm sure you can fit the Deca Ranger Robo pieces inside it, which is 
always something I'm a fan of. I love the solar panel on the chest. The <laughs> goofy earmuffs are not as good, I think, and I knock it down a few points. It's a, it's better than Buster or Ranger Robo, I'd say. We'll put it right there. We'll put the guy right there. We're really hanging out in B. I gotta scroll down more here. By virtue of just how this works, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of the lower tiers. Apologies in advance. Decabike Robo, I wish was better. It is almost like the the big issue for me is the Super Deca Ranger Robo fists are right there, right out in front. It is absolutely a D because of that, but it is just a the best D so far. It's not so terrible. It's got to be in D because of that. Like, in addition to just not looking great, it almost feels like sometimes these secondary mechs are almost just... They, they have a live boxer kind of syndrome, but I guess li I'm able to excuse live boxer because it was 1988 when it showed up. But in 2004, a mech that's mostly just what you're going to attach to Deca Ranger Robo to make Super Deca Ranger Robo kind of all slapped together makes it less good. Super Deca Ranger Robo, by the way, is next, and it is great, and it is going... Oh, is it going to S? I love Super Deca Ranger Robo. I really do. I think so. It's definitely in, like, the max Victory Robo tier, I think. Not as good as Oranger Robo. Not as good as... Yeah, I'm putting it right there. I think it looks great. I think it's really cool. Deco Wing Robo, very cool, too. It's going up to A. It's a very sleek design in my mind. I don't love the SWAT forms of the Deca Rangers. They look... Oh, <laughs> it's like tactical gear I get. I get it. They're a SWAT team. But it's on top of like a regular spandex Sentai uniform and it looks kind of goofy. Uh, not as good as Battle Fever Robo. A little better than Sun Vulcan Robo, I'd say. That's where that guy's going. That's where Deca Wing Robo's going. Overall, a bit of a mixed bag for Deca Ranger, but it is what it is. Here we are with Magic King, who I said I love a mech with a hat. It's got a witch hat. I should like it more than I do. It's still probably a B. Unfortunate. I don't want to, you know, all you Magic Ranger fans out there. Uh, the toy's kind of unwieldy. I love the the wings especially. The wings for the I don't know, Magi Falcon, Magi Hawk, Magi Yellow's mech are <laughs> like they want you in the instructions to have the wings out all the way. And the wings out all the way, you're going to be knocking over all the other toys on your shelf. So, you know, keep them closed. It's still a sizable wingspan with the wings closed. The commercial for Magic King has it end in this really awkward looking position where you can tell they wanted it to look more majestic, but because it's a Sentai toy, it has three and a half points of articulation. So, I do like, I mean, you can do the thing where you could push the hat up. I mean, you yourself have to push the hat up. You can't articulate it in a way where it does the index finger push the hat up thing, but you could do it on the toy to kind of hide, you know, because it's supposed to hide the face. Uh, still fine. There's a lot better stuff in Magic Ranger, which I... Better than Gal Muscle, definitely. I'm putting them right there. I, I've been hovering over that spot uh, kind of as a placeholder, but I think that's where it deserves to be. I like Trevelyan. It has sort of the same issue with Deca Ranger Robo I was talking about, where it's a very wide toy. Uh, for some reason, just the... They got it really good with Grand Liner in GoGo -Go 5, but for some reason, like, it's a really stumpy looking dude. I like Magishine. Magishine's kind of cool. I don't know if this is even better than Magic King. I guess so. Not too much. Better than Gown Knight, not as good as Mega Winger. That seems correct, because I do kind of like, I like the Turb, and I like the, you know, Magishine's lamp gun with the cat inside it. He's a cool guy. Not part of the family, but a cool guy nonetheless. I don't like Magic Legend. Uh, this is all me going into like the same kind of V-Rex Robo thing I was talking about, where the fact that 
the toy is almost entirely automated. I don't like it all. I don't like the super forms that go along with this, because it removes the capes from the Magi Rangers. It's better than Titan Boy, at least it's better than Star 5. It's still got a, it's a still a good design. It's better than a lot of the Showa designs. I can't put it below Change Robo, I think. We'll keep Flash Titan up there, but Magi Legend, it, just from a completely biased perspective, I do not like. On the other hand, I love Wolkaiser, and he's going straight to the top, baby. I love that... Oh, this is technically, a, you know, you can have the big Woolzard riding the horse. Whatever the horse's name is, I'm sure it has a name that I do not remember, because it's been probably nearly ten years since I watched Magic Ranger. But you can, you get that form, you get the centaur form, you get the combined form, which looks really cool. It's one of my favorites. I'm glad I have the toy of it. It's going above O-Ranger Robo. I'm also... Uh, spoiler... I'm also... I'm really into purple. <laughs> and purple is a color that it took them until 2005 to get to, and we don't see it again until... Curuger? Like, it's a good long while until we see some purple here, and it's still not something we see too often at all, but I'll take any kind of purple robot I can get here, and purple and black, too. Can't go wrong there. Absolutely. Oh, I didn't scroll up enough. There it is. Sorry, my apologies. I gotta keep an eye on where the things are here. And next we got St. Kaiser. I think I might have trampled over this when we were at Gownite. I'm also including the movie mechs in here, at least the movie mechs that have their own mech, because as you see, we didn't do the Blast Buggy for Decker Ranger. Uh, we didn't do... We won't do the Frog in Go Busters. We won't do the Kyuryu Origami. Probably. Not probably. We're definitely not doing that. Not doing, like, the... Dinosaur from Ninja, because it's basically just an auxiliary mech. St. Kaiser, though, looks cool. Still probably only going to go with a kind of a tepid A, even. Uh, the white and red is still really cool looking. It's the same deal as Wool Kaiser, pretty much, but I'm going low A for this boy on this one because. because I want to, alright? Don't sue me. <laughs> Please don't sue me because I put St. Kaiser at the bottom of A. Please! Alright, next is Daiboken from Bokenger. We are now 30 of 47 deep, but there are still not even at number 100, I don't think. No, number 100 on my list is, is Gekitoja, so we're not even half done, by the way. So, Daiboken is fine. I think it gets a lot better with the other mechs that are brought in. I'm gonna put him above below Gao Icarus, I think. He I like his big shovel. I like his pickaxe. I like that that turns into a sword. But it's only going up from here on the Bokenger mechs. Super Die Boken is definitely an A, a high A even. I'd put him yeah, probably above Dyreno because uh, it's... <laughs> I mean, this is going to show you how much I like Ultimate Daiboken when we get there, but uh, I like the horn helmet on him. It's basically Ultimate Daiboken without the jet on the back and with a different head. Uh, super great. Love this guy, but little outshined by Ultimate Daiboken when we're going to get there. Uh, Daitanken who is the combined form. I love that they put it together to have a combined form for the GoGo -Go vehicles 6 through 10. So they're not just auxiliaries. I mean, you could... <laughs> a Ditankin looks a little goofy just because he has to use the jet as his main body, at least the toy does. Uh, so it's not great. It's probably still like a C, even though he's got a drill limb and he's got the... Uh, digger, limb, the backhoe, whatever you want to call it, the scope. Uh, 
The Titankin is better than Giga Rhinos. Probably not as good as VRV Robo. Ultimate Divokin is going way up top. Way up top. Probably better than O-Blocker. It's wonderful. I... God, I love Ultimate Divokin. It's the most put together of the big combined mech forms. Like, you're not going to get a better 10-piece mech than Ultimate Divokin because everything fits together very well. It's not gigantic, which I, I'm not going to put against it, certainly. To the point where, like, a Bokenger, I believe, is where Bandai of America stopped using the Super Sentai molds for Power Rangers, and regular Daiboken's kind of puny, so they really beefed it up, and I mean, I'm not gonna, I don't want any of the Power Rangers versions of the mechs from, you know, Operation Overdrive on, where I can kind of, you know, I've got the, I've got the Muteki Shogun with the pink arm, and I can still be like, hey, look, it's Muteki Shogun, even though he has different stickers, and a pink arm, because, you know, a regular a Japanese Muteki Shogun is going to be like $450, but I can skirt by with... I don't think that's illegal. I don't think that's fine. I'm just going to have, you know, my, my Mutiki Shogun's going to have a pink arm. And a lightning bolt instead of the Japanese symbol in the middle of the chest. That's not a giant problem. Again, sue me. Please don't sue me. I don't love Siren Builder. I like Boken Silver. Siren Builder is kind of, it's got the Giga Rhinos thing where its legs don't work. They are just a means to, like, hey, this thing can stand up. Whoa! Again, it's like a ladder. Whoa! Or a scissor lift or something. Uh, it's got a weird face, too. It's got a weird hat on top of its weird face. Not a great mech. Better than Magic Legend. I really, like, socked it to Magic Legend, so I'm putting him... He's below the Vic trailer. I think. Above the Vic trailer, I think. That's where that's going. Die Voyager is great. Again, I had noted that it was like a better version of Max Magma, so he's at least going above Max Magma, but even more than that, this is... Die Voyager is an A, for certain. Die Voyager's not as good as Bakaren O, I think. That's where that guy's going. That's where... No, Die Voyager is number 100, excuse me, on my list, because I forgot about Baccarino in the first go-around, and I'm glad because, you know, you don't want to miss out on an A rank. So here we are, 2007's Geki Ranger. I'm going to go on record to say I am not the biggest Geki Ranger fan, and it is all the fault of Jan the Red. I don't like his stupid speech pattern. Not a fan. Everyone else is fine, especially Melee. Shout out to Melee. Gekitoja is interesting in concept, I'd say. It's still probably a C in my mind. The red is doing 90% of the work here. It's, I mean, blue and yellow are legs, obviously. Uh, it's mostly in service of the spinny gimmick, which I'll put him right near... No, I was going to put him near RV Rubble, but I don't like him as much as Max Oj. I do like him more than Giga Phoenix, I think. So that's where Geki Toja's going. Geki Fire is a little better, I think. Again, he's, he's part monkey, and I don't love Gorilla. But I'll put him above RV Robo, I think. That's where that guy's going. A little Geki Fire. Saidayo has the same problem as a lot of these other mechs, but he's really automated. It's better than Magic Legend, at least. Saidayo uh, just kind of stands up, from what I remember from the combined form. It's got the electronics take up, make it so its body can barely do anything, so it literally has... You know, I, I said three and a half points of articulation as a joke before, but it's pretty much true from what I remember on this one, where you get two arms and a head swivel, and that's basically it, which is... Especially for something that you're not combining that is just a mech on its own. Is really pitiful. Worse than Siren Builder. It's a good design. I like the design of it. It's a better design than Siren Builder. So it gets it gets 
ahead on that, but otherwise, Site.io is fine. Don't love him. Alright, I believe Goanger has potentially the most mechs of any series from what I remember saving here because this one goes crazy. And I like it. I like that. Regular Engine O is a bit goofy looking. Like, when I had first seen this when Power Rangers RPM came around, because I, you know, I wasn't... Super Sentai is something I got into only about 10 years ago, around the time Kyo was airing. So my only real exposure was things like the Power Rangers RPM toy line, and I was looking at it, it's a weird totem pole. The engines... Having watched the series, I love Goanger, by the way. It's one that probably deserves a rewatch for me, because it was pretty early on in my... Uh, watch order. It's still a B, I think. Things get... <laughs> Things get better. I don't know if they actually get better. B might... All the Goantra mechs might end up in B, because... They also need to be in service of a combined form that is... <laughs> that I like... But is also complicated. <laughs> Uh, Engine O is better than the Time Robos, I think. Not quite as good as Daidenjin. That's where... That's where he's going. Gunboro is definitely, like, IM pieces of another mech. The face isn't great. It's kind of awkwardly proportioned. It does have an alligator for a chest, but it can't, like, go out chompa chomp and like, Gao Hunter. So it's not as good as Gao Hunter. Not even as good as Great Icarus. I'm going to put it... Not even as good as VRV Robo. Not even as good as Ditankin. I'm putting it better than Giga Rhinos, I think. I do like... And no offense to... Gunpurd, Barka, and Corrugator. We're all great. We're all my guys. Gonna be a high C. Gonna be that sweet high C Ecto Cooler. Next we got Engine OG6, which Engine OG6 is I I the the least convoluted looking of all the combinations, but also still it's mostly just Engine O wearing with new arms and wearing Corrugator as shoes. Which is I mean, we're gonna see that a lot. I think it's it's not as good as Engine O. It's not even as good as Delta Mega. Not even as good as Abareno. I'm putting them there. I do like... I mean... We're getting there. We're getting there. Seikuo is kind of bland looking. It's mostly the whale. Jumbo whale that... Takes up... It's got a... It's got a fine face, I guess. I don't love the go-on wings. They're, they're fine. <laughs> they're kind of... They're jerks for much more of the series than I would have liked. I recently watched Kamen Rider Kabuto, and I was very happy to see the first, the B, and... Oh, he's Kick Hopper, I think, right? Yeah. I was very happy to see Goan Gold in that series, but he's much better in Kabuto than he is in Goanger. Uh, better than Trevelyan. Not as good as the Mega Winger. That sounds correct. That sounds right to me. Engine OG9 is getting more and more ridiculous. I like that <laughs> Teripter and Jetris are just sitting on the shoulders, which we do also have. I didn't mention that with Super Deco Ranger Robo, uh, which could be construed as a minus. I don't love it here, but I'm fine with it on Super Deco Ranger Robo, so I don't know what my thought process is. It is still better than Engine OG6, or is it? <laughs> it's right in that area, like, these combined forms, you're definitely adding stuff, but like, the final product is not much better than what you're adding onto it. I, yeah, I wouldn't even call it better than Abareno, I think that G6 and G9 are right next to each other. Kyoretsu O looks cool, definitely. Probably, yeah, better than Engine O. You have the... The Daisyujin horns on him. 
which I don't think are a reference. They might be. I mean, anything could be a reference, really. Kiretsu O is... I mean, again, he's made of trains. He's made of dinosaur trains, so he should be right up my alley. I wish that he was better than the sum of his parts. He's going there. Engine OG12, just for the sheer audacity of it. It is absolutely going into A. It's going to be a pretty high A, I think. You just, you watch the video of the combination of all 12, where all of the engines do their little catchphrase and whatever, where it takes nearly two minutes to get this entire robot together. And it is one of the most majestic things in Super Sentai history. Even though most of it's... I mean, 100% of it is 3D until you get to the suit itself. Which, the fact that they even made a suit for it, unlike, uh, like, Toradora Onitaijin, which is, you know, much later on the list here, where, like, Good Cool Kaiser VSX, I don't think, had a costume. Uh, Zenryoku Zenkai O. They don't make costumes for the giant combinations anymore. And they should. They go over... <laughs> we're going to see in Shinkenger in the next series, they go way overboard with this, to the point where it's a complete and total mass of confusion. But Engino G12 is going above Kakurei Dai Shogun. Again, sheer audacity. Absolutely crazy. Barely even different from Engino G9. I say... Well, I say barely. You still got the shoulders there, you have new arms, you have the mammoth mostly sitting on the back and making him, you know, and becoming shoes again, pretty much. For Gunpart and Burka to just kind of stand there. Absolutely wild. It's a wild piece of machinery. I like the Go Rotor GT. I like him. I don't, I mean, it's, we're kind of coming down from one of the more complicated 12-piece mech combinations to a wheel. I own Gorodor GT. I think he's kind... I think... I just think he's neat. I just think he's neat! And he's better than Super Turbo Builder. Yes. That seems fine. Time Shadow a little better. I think that's fine. Uh, I really like Engine Dai Shogun. I mean, it's basically the... You know, occasionally you'll have the black recolor... Apologies for not including, you know, the black Max Victory Robo or black version of most of the mechs that are in here. But there's just enough different with, like, the gold and the headpiece that this is a definite A. I think it makes Engino look a lot better. It's a toy I hope to own one day. I think it's better even than Galaxy Mega. Better than some Vulcan Robo. It's really cool. Let's move on here. Shinken O doesn't really do it for me. The origami is an interesting concept. I think the big helmet is weird looking. I think I don't... Something about it, like the way that the, sh the origami end up shape-wise, like the, the legs and arms, it's very awkward looking in my mind. And he's probably going to be mid-C for that. Better than Jet Kicker. Better than Killer O. Not as good as Live Robo. Daikai O is a crab. Is a crab man. And he's got four forms based on the direction. Everybody loves Shinkenger. It went by very quickly for me. It was. It's all a blur. I remember almost nothing about it. I apologize. All the Shinkenger fans out there. Shinken Gold's a cool guy. He's got a sushi phone. Uh, I remember that, at least. Barely remember his mech. But he's a crab. So he's a crab greater than turtle. Daikai Shinken O is kind of goofy looking. The combinations are not good in Shinkenjir, which we'll get to with Samurai Ha O in a minute or two here. I got a real problem with the way it looks. It's the head, the crown, the crab crown, the crabown is too big. So he's going below Gunber. Oh, he's going below Giga Rhinos. I'd say, yeah, even below Gekitoja. Giga Phoenix is kind of the stopgap of this tier, I think, where 
it's the first one that I look at and I'm like, I'm not too hot on Giga Phoenix. Same in that the Turbo Rugger area. Yeah, that's where that's where he's going. And we got what this is, Mogu Dio, I believe is the name of this one. I have my list here, but I don't have it scrolled down enough. <laughs> it's the cow. It's the cow that pulls the cart or whatever, which I think is probably the best of the individual Shinkenger mechs. Still, oh, is it even? Actually, is it better? No, it's better than Daikaiyo, definitely. So I'll put it between Engino G6 and G9 just to put some space between them here. Uh, the toy doesn't do too much. I think it is, this is another one of the electronics where you just kind of move it forward, but I like that Like, this one, the big helmet works for me with the horns. I think I'm always going to like horns on a mech. I say even as technically, you know, the Shogun helmet on Shinken O has cool horns on it. It's not enough. Not enough for me. Samurai Ha'o is... <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. It's all the stuff put together in a way worse way than it ends up with Engino. I understand what they were trying to do. It looks like garbage. It is... Oh, man, is it a D? Am I putting Samurai Ha'o in D? This one, I... It's not as cute as Engino G12, I think, and without that... Without that around it, I think it's got a... It's better than Super 5 Robo, I think. <laughs> better than Jutei Daijujin, because at least it's more than Shinkano wearing a hat. It's not good. I'm very mild on Daigoyo. I don't have much to say about it. He's a lantern and... Uh, what is that weapon? A Jite? Or a Jeet? Whatever you want to call it. Tiger Jeet Sing. I don't know, dude. Uh, not as good as Tackle Boy. Not as good as Bio Robo. I'll put it at least. At least it transforms in some way, so it's better than Psy Dio, I guess. High praise for Daigoyo, the Lantern Boy, who had an annoying personality, from what I remembered. And to Gosager now, which feels to me like a bit of a black sheep between Shinkendra and Gokaiger, two very popular series. I like Gosager a lot, probably the best out of all, all three of those. I think the designs are, I mean, we'll, I guess we'll see here. We'll start with Gosei Great, of course, uh, who has a lot of similarities to Gao King in terms of the, I guess just the the blue and the white arm that are, that just have a head as the hand, which the headers are a fine gimmick. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, I don't think Gosei Great is going to go any too much further than Gao King, though, even as much as I may like the design. Uh, I like the snake. The snake's a cool mech. Uh, Gosei Great, though, I'm going to put him not above Buster Ranger Robo, not even above Time Robo. Better than Daikaiyo, I'd say. That's where, that's where that guy is going. Next, we've got Datus Hyper, who... Very recently, I realized, like, the way that the header opens up for the head here to, like, make that shape, uh, in addition to being a boxer, it gives a lot of kangaroo vibes, which is weird, because <laughs> Datus is a, what, a Sentai Cardass machine, I believe is the name of the game? He's, a, he's an arcade cabinet, basically, which is a great thing to be, and I think the design, the toy's very blocky, it doesn't look great, but the suit i think is great i don't i mean the red feels weird with the boxing gloves considering he's mostly blue but they're boxing gloves so datus not as good as abareno not as good as abareno i still think pretty good though in the b fairly decent b uh hyper gose great i love hyper gose great is going right to s uh it is much like and Geno G12, in my mind, it is an exercise in overkill. It's 15 headers all together, slapped on there. It's basically just Gosei Great with a bunch of stuff connected to it, but it is it goes so far beyond ridiculous that I don't. It's gonna be the bottom of S, Hyper Gosei Great. I 
acknowledge that it's <laughs> just a bunch of stuff all together, but I think it looks so ridiculous that it has to rank... It has to rank that high. It has to rank that high. It has to. Absolutely. Moving on to Gosei Ground here for my guy Gosei Knight, who is probably the best part of Gosager. The team is fine. They're kind of a generic team, but Gosei Knight's awesome. Bad guy. Several bad guy groups, which this and Bokenger did, which Bokenger ranks very high for me as well, as you probably you know can tell at this point. Uh, I think is... It helps to keep things fresh, because over 50 episodes, the same villain group, like some of the old Showa Sentai, there's like no changes to dynamic most of the time. They usually add in like a mid-season villain sometimes to shake things up. Your Amazon Killers, your Chevalier, people like that, even though I guess, you know, Five Man's Heisei, but whatever. Still very much in that vein. Gosei Ground, though, I think is in A. It's a big, burly mech. Gosei Knight himself forms the head, which you gotta love. He himself is a header. Not as good as... Slightly better than Jekaruda. That's where he's going. That's where that guy ends up. Uh, ground Gosei Great, which, I mean, I understand all the cards say ground. All the transformation things say ground. The... It sounds like it should be grand. Like Gosei Grand and Grand Gosei Great. Ground doesn't make a ton of sense to me, considering... I mean, he is supposed to be, you know, the... Gosei Ground is, you know, Land Sea, Sky. Sky Exeic, Landic. He's got elements of all three. The main lion of Gosei Knight himself is the land part, so maybe that's why it's ground, but it feels like it should be grand. This combination is pretty good... Uh, I like that the <laughs> the head is just Gosei Knight doing a split now to kind of open it up and change it up a bit. I don't think it's as good as regular Gosei Ground, though. It is still pretty close. I still think it's an A. I'm going to put him right above St. Kaiser. I think a little better than St. Kaiser. I like he's got a big, long weapon, a big Goryujin-type weapon, which we're going to start seeing a lot more. If we've seen it a few times already. No, this is, it's basically, this is the crutch of multi-mech combinations at this point, is a big staff for the toy to kind of hold in front of it. We'll see that a few times going forward here. Uh, and finally, we got Gosei Ultimate, who, actually, well, it's not finally, but we have Gosei Ultimate, who is kind of a disappointment. It's transforms into a kind of anonymous gray spaceship. I do like the face in the chest. I do like the helmet. The combination is just you stick it on the back of Gosei Great, so it's kind of its own mech. Uh, which, like Gekiatsu Daio and Orion Battler and things, I'm not as hot on. So Gosei Ultimate is going to be pretty low, I think, in C. I don't actively dislike it. I, I gave... Shinken O a lot of guff, so he's going right above Shinken O, because I don't I don't dislike it. I kinda dislike it. It's like it's like a five out of ten for me, which is I guess what C is, pretty much. And finally we got Wonder Go Say Great, which I think is different enough that it should be its own mech. It is mostly all the same pieces. The Go Say Dragon is replaced by uh, whatever the blue thing is, I don't remember the name of it, and a bunch of different headers to change the other pieces into different animals, which I think is a nice way to do that. Uh, this is kind of, it's not exactly a Bakuren O situation. Uh, I think it's better than base Gosei Great. He's got a giant axe. I think it's a hawk or like a falcon or an eagle or something because the tail is the axe and the giant axe is a lot cooler than Gosei Great has a weird dragon tail sword which does not look great. It does kind of have like saw teeth on it though which is pretty cool. Uh, better than Decabase. Not as good as Decabase Robo. We'll put a we'll put a few spaces in between them. It's not a gigantic glow up. Now we got Gokaiger, and I like Gokai O. I think that a Gokai O is really just it's a tale of the Gokai Galleon is great. The hat on it is great. I don't like the jet. I don't like Formula. I don't like Marine, and I don't like the Trek trailer one. Carry. I don't know. I can't remember what the 
trailer, Gokai trailer, I don't remember. So, four of the five limbs on Gokaio are bad, but the full aesthetic, I cannot deny, is really good. It is way better than the sum of its parts. It's really just, again, the Gokai Galleon and the hat doing 99% of the heavy lifting here. I'm gonna put it... Above Gal God, I'd say. Still a high B. We'll call it like a 7 out of 10 for Gokaio, maybe. Uh, next, we've got Samurai Gokaio, which I actually like a lot better. Now, I don't have the Magic Dragon version of Gokaio, the Pat Striker version, the. What was that guy's name? Furaimaru? The Hurricaneer one. I mean, you're adding in, I like that Gal Lion becomes a Shinkenger. It's really, it's the best version of, it's a much, it's a much better Shinken O, really. That's all that I'm trying to say. I think that this is probably the best mech, oh well, well the, at least the best main mech combination. Because Kanzen Gokaio is not as good, which we will see in a minute. Uh... Mmm, slightly worse than Jet Garuda, I'll say. That's where I'm gonna put this guy. Still pretty good, though. I like the... Uh, the aesthetics of it are a lot better than both normal Gokaio and Shinkano, I think. Uh, Gojujin is really cool. He's blue and red. He's got a lot of classic Sentai mech energy. He's got the Daijujin horns. Obviously inspired by, has the, you know, the powers of both V-Rex and Dragon Caesar in him. Got a drill arm, turns into a dinosaur. Really cool. I mean, dinosaur and drill alone, that's high A material. That's better than Dyreno, I think. That's way cool. And... The guy is a great, like, Gokai Silver is a great character, too. He's the Sentai fan. He's literally me. He's he's the guy who is who annoys everyone with his knowledge of Sentai. That's where he's going. And, as I said, Kanzen Gokaio, which is a very weird combination of Gokaio, Gojujin, and Mach-Elkin. mach -el Mock Falcon, whatever, whatever you want to call him. Not great though, he's got a big weird hand, which really, that's enough to put him in C, I think, the big weird hand. Uh, the big, the hat's too big. The regular Gokaio swords become accoutrement on the hat, and I don't really like that. So, he's, it's, a, it's, it's, they tried. They tried, but I, I don't love it. Better than Tackle Boy, at least. Uh, is this the, man, is this the lowest ranking big combination, I guess, other than Samurai Ha- No, Samurai Ha is always gonna be pulling up the rear on that one, I think. Go Buster Ace is definitely an A. It's got really good aesthetics. Uh, a lot of Go Buster's mechs fall apart after Go Buster Ace. It's truly simple. You get to be both a cheetah... A really weird looking cheetah and a cool car. You got sunglasses on your robot that are slightly transparent so you can see the eyes behind him. Like he's a Metal Heroes character. Uh, better than some Vulcan Robo, I think. Go Buster Ace is really cool. Go Buster O. I get. Go Buster O feels like. <laughs> it feels like super live robo where it's you have these kind of disparate parts and you look at it all together and you go that doesn't really look right at least in the toy but that is how it goes that is how they designed it and it's not terrible i'll say i like it i don't it's really it's really it's the rabbit ears it is the year of the rabbit right now but the rabbit ears on go buster o really weigh it down. It's just the, the face mask on Go Buster Ace is, it feels kind of cheap on there too. It's weird. It's weird looking. It's better better than Gal Knight, better than Travelion. Not better than Mega Winger, I'll say. 
Buster Hercules. Now, I'm going to say I like Go Buster Beat a bit more because Buster Hercules is just Go Buster Beat with a bunch of guff on him. <laughs> with the stag, whatever Jay's mech is, just kind of stuck on top of him here, which does not make for a great aesthetic. I would rank... I don't want to rank them separately because... It's really not that different. It's literally just Go Buster Beat and Go Buster Beat with stuff on him. Which, the extra stuff on him does kind of lower it a bit. I think the face is cooler. Like, the face opens up for Buster Hercules, Buster Heracles, whatever you want to say. It's a C. It's a C, but it is better than Geki Fire, I will say. That's where that guy's going. Great Go Buster is the form that I normally keep the toys in. It's more complete than Go Buster O. I think, again, kind of the helmet, the weird looking, super cool, a digital readout looking face is, or visor at least, is pretty cool. Uh, the one thing that's weird on this one for me is the cheetah head just kind of hangs out on the shoulder with the rabbit head as well on the other side. And. It looks a little out of place, but this is this again. This uh, Great Go Buster feels like the most pieces that aren't supposed to go together that end up going together. Kind of like you know, very specific Legos all being kind of put together, almost not in their intended way. Still better. Still a B. Still a B. Still a B. Definitely a B. Pretty good combination. I mean, again, I like this is the form that I have them in. I like the way this looks aesthetically the most, I think. And I'm gonna... I'm even gonna put them above V-Rex, I think. He looks neat. I feel like a lot of that is the faceplate, which goes to show how much Go Buster O ends up getting ruined by the faceplate. Uh, next, we got Tategami Lyo here, who is a lion motorcycle lion. Uh, the aesthetics on him are pretty good, the proportions are kind of weird, the voice is not as cool, like the voice that they have for the laptop that turns into a, a big gun to control this guy, that turns into like a steering wheel, I think. Ghostbusters is kind of weird aesthetically, they got a different voice for it compared to the It's Morphin Time voice of like the brace and the transport pod and the other stuff. Not as good. It's kind of. It will always make me laugh. The Tategami Lyo! Go do do do! Like. That's funny, but it's also not good. Uh. Eh, better than Mogu Dio, I'd say. Still cool. Still pretty cool. Go Buster Lyo is a little different than Go Buster King, who we're gonna see. Uh. I think, yeah, this is, you get the lion in the chest now, which is always welcome, of course. Not as good as Abareno. Still gonna put it, still gonna put it decently high in B, I think. Let me scroll up, I gotta make sure I can, people can see where I'm putting this stuff. That's where he is, right there, in B. High B, currently. And finally, we got Go Buster King, which is a bit of a mess, quite frankly. Not as good as Great Go Buster. Still a B, probably? Less good than Go Buster Lyo. P probably a bit better than Tatagami Lyo. Yeah, I'll put him below Datus. So, before we finish up here, I just want to note that when I watched Go Busters, the subgroup that I used likes translating O as King, which is the translation. Like, Go Buster O is, you know, they just translate it as Go Buster King, which caused a bit of a problem when a mech showed up later on in the series called Go Buster King. So what they did, they just called it Go Buster O in the subs. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Call it whatever you want. I don't know if they keep doing that. I don't think they do anymore. I, I don't know if it's because of this, certainly, but... Go Buster King, pretty cool. Alright, we're moving on to a series that I have a lot of 
nostalgia. Well, I don't even want to say nostalgia. A lot of love for it because it was the first one that I watched weekly, which is Kiryujin. And the thing is, Kiryujin is a Mega Bloks ass looking mech. It's most of the Tyrannosaurus with only the arms being different things. Man. I do like the spiky. I don't even know if I like it as much as the. I like it more than Abareno, because Abareno's got like chicken legs, which is really weird, but then Kiryujin has the opposite problem where his legs are <laughs> too thick and the feet are too prevalent to where when we get to other things it's literally just a dinosaur standing on <laughs> missiles or a Brachiosaurus pieces and stuff. Uh, better than Engino. Better than Engino. That's where I'm going to put him. High, high B, I think. Tyrannosaurus is cool. I like that he's got a an evil version with the face mask down. Uh, he's kind of regular look. I mean, like you can't do much with a Tyrannodon, I think they do as as good a job as they can making the Tyrannodon form look cool and then transforming it into a pretty decent robot. Still kind of a B for me. Better than Mogu Dio. Better than Tategami Lio. Better than Delta Mega. Better than Change Robo. I'm going to finally put something between Time Robo Alpha, Time Robo Shadow Alpha, and Time Robo Shadow Beta. That's where those are going. And now I don't like Raiden Kuryujin because it is just Kuryujin with a new hat wearing a backpack. It is not very impressive. I know I said, you know, like I don't have the Mega Voyager with the wings on the list here, and this is barely any different from that. Really, the hat is the only thing that saves this from being a different... Like, I, you know, I don't have Kakurei Dai Shogun with Tsubasa Maru on it. This is a C. This is just disappointing that... I mean, the toys do what they do. You can only do so much with the engineering. All you need to do is give it some wings. In a way that this isn't, this isn't too much different from Hyper Gosei Great with just you stick something on the back of the existing robot and change it around enough, but that's where Hyper Go Say Great, you add in, what, 10 other headers on it, and you have a completely different looking robot. Uh, this is slightly, this is worse than the Vic trailer, I'd say, better than Turbo Robo. Plezuo is going high, baby, he's going, I think, uh, really high up in A, I think. This was one of the first, I think this was the first Kiryu mech I bought, just because it was, I love purple, again. Kiryu Violet is both versions. Dr. Little Shade and Girl, whose name I can't remember right now at this exact moment. Really fun characters. Yayoi, I think her name was. Pretty cool. I'm, yeah, I'm putting it above Super... Daipoken, and just below Kiba, Dio. It's a, it's a plesiosaurus. Come on, man. He's got a cool tall hat. He's got all these things that I like in Zentai Max. He's got a giant arm. That's a giant plesiosaurus cannon. Who wouldn't want that? Bakuretsu Kyoryujin is different enough, I think. Again, you're kind of... It, it looks like a dinosaur standing on top of two ballast things. With, like, the rockets under its feet, so that kind of puts the points down a little bit, but I really like the way the head opens up on this one. I like that you have the Gabatira head out front, facing front on this one when it was on the shoulder before. Still a B in my mind. Better than normal Kyrgyzhin. Kind of up at the top. I think it's better than better than Victory Mars. Yeah. But it is better than Victory Mars. I really like Bakuretsu Kyrgyzhin. Gigant Braggy O who belongs to a great Sentai member. Kiryu Silver is... I know my good friend loves his debut. I, I mean, I love it too, but that's the thing that he remembers most from the series, I think. Uh, the mech is great. It's a big, burly guy. You can open him up and store all your batteries, which is what I am currently using him for, because I have a lot of superfluous batteries. Uh, and it's just, he's got the gladiator look to him. He does have, he has his, I mean, you gotta use that giant neck for something, so he's got his own, he's not even a combined mech, and he's got a giant, like, polearm weapon, which is great. I think, 
Braggy O is not going to be higher. Not going to be higher than B. Better than Bakaret Secure Eugen. Better than Deco Ranger. Better than Goraijin, I'd say. High up in B is Gigant Braggy O. And then Gigant Cure Eugen is better than Bakaretsu Kyoryujin. I think it's still just kind of Gavotira standing on something. I love the chest plate with all of the uh, battery dinosaurs on them. The hat gets very tall, almost too tall. I might deduct some points here. Uh, is it better? It is a little better than Bakaretsu Kyoryujin, I think. It is not as good as Decoranger Robo. So that is where that guy is going. And finally, we got Spino Dio, which is, again, you take the main mech, you make him blue, you give him a cool crescent helmet, you make him a Spinosaurus. It's not going to get him any higher than above V-Rex, I think. The picture on the wiki is one of the most pitiful there. It's almost literally 100 by 100. It's going to look like the JPEGiest JPEGs ever JPEG when it is edited in later. It's going to be terrible, but love the guy. So now we move on to the Tokyo mechs. Uh, I feel like Tokyo O is kind of divisive in its simplicity, where it is, you know, you put all the trains next to each other. It's a very thin toy. Uh, I love the face reveal of the doors opening up on it. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't like just the kind of the basic colors all together, but it's thematic with the series, at least when we get to, you know, Tokyo Rainbow. It's all about just the colors all together. It is... It is, an, is it an A? Do I like Tokyo O that much? Regular Tokyo O? I think I do. I think I like it more than Galaxy Mega, where I am currently holding it. That's where that's going. And I like... And I like Diesel O even more! He's got the cool western look to him. He is definitely he is the flattest boy in toy form. I love this guy. I'm almost, god, I almost want to put Diesel O in S. It is not better than a lot of the higher up stuff in A. Like, it's not better it's not better than Bull Taurus. It's not better. It is better than Engine OG 12. It's trains. It's just, it's three trains. It's It's got cool colors, like Car Carrier Russia is, you know, you got orange, you got the light blue, you got the maroon. It's colors you don't see terribly often. It's auxiliary mechs making their own mech, which is not always a common thing. I think you gotta give Diesel O a lot of respect. The face is cool on him. I think he's great. Cho Tokyo O. Let's scroll up here. I don't love Cho Tokyo O as much as Cho Cho Tokyo O, so I'm not gonna put him any higher, I think, than regular Tokyo O. He's probably not getting out of B. The combination, it's kind of more of the same. You do have the cool shoulder, I guess they're technically shoulder cannons, even though they're just kind of shoulder pieces. Uh, you get more trains on him to make him look a little wider, a little more imposing, potentially. Uh, you get a horned helmet. I don't love that you still have kind of the lip face on it. Uh, but it's it's better than Kyoretsu O, I think. I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm gonna put him right there. That feels right to me. Build Dio is, I mean, we get orange. You don't get a lot of orange. He's got the safety vest, uh, like high viz straps on, which I think is great. He's kind of two awkward trains, but I like the way that this. They managed to, with how flat the other mechs are, they managed to make Bill Dio look a bit more robust with the way that the combination works on him. It is better than Tokyo, not by a ton. Probably not better than Engine Dai Shogun. So I'm putting him right there. Tokyo number six as well is a great sixth among sixths. I mean, most of them are good. There hasn't been a memorable one in a... Well, two Kaiser was pretty good. I don't love Jiro in the current series. Again, dating this somewhat. He's fine. He's he's uh, not as good as uh, Jewel of the World, and I will... Maybe we'll do a ranking of that at some point. 
Uh, Chocho Cho Tokyo I like a lot. Uh, I think <laughs> most of this is the Bill Dio visor on it, uh, covering the eyes. I'm fine with, I think, I'm fine with lips if there's a visor, and I'm fine with separated eyes if there's a mouth plate. Visor and mouth plate is cool, but maybe a bit much, other, you know, although we keep coming back to Dino Robo a lot in this list, and those two factors contributing a lot to it, but, uh, separated, like, two eyes and lips don't always work for me. Almost every other combination does, but regular eyes and lips are pretty common. Uh, it's better than Red Puncher, I think. We'll put him up. We'll put him up there. We'll put him higher than Red Puncher. Hyper Resha Tao is definitely the chunkiest of the boys. He's very large. Uh, the design's fine on it. It's one that I'm kind of. Not ambivalent, I'd say. I do like it. He's a chunky guy. He's made up of a giant gold train, which you do gotta love. But in the same kind of vein, he is not better than a lot of this stuff in B, which is all very strong. Not even better than Cho to No, better than Cho Tokyo. Not as good as Gao God. Not as good. Better than Spino Dio. Not as good as Spino Dio, we'll say. Better than V-Rex Robo. That's where he's going. And then we got Tokyo Rainbow, who is not good, who is very flat and is made up. Maybe this is just sour grapes. Like, some people might not like Hyper Gosei Great because you need to get the Landic Brothers, Skyic Brothers, Seek Brothers, things that are auxiliary, that don't serve a ton of purpose outside of, you know, you can make the Landic Gosei Great or whatever, if you want with a different face, that's fine. With this one, it's like you need, in order to like fill out all the spaces on Tokyo Rainbow, you need Police Resha, you need Fire Resha, you need like the one that goes in the gun, I think? I can't remember the name of that one. Like you need all these auxiliary trains that don't do anything outside of like fill out space on Tokyo Rainbow or act as an auxiliary mech, which, so maybe if there's someone out there that has a completed Tokyo Rainbow and it looks great i can understand why they would probably rank it high but for me it is it does it doesn't look great it's also again very you can't do anything with it i mean you can't do anything with a lot of the big combined forms but tokyo rainbow is tall and flat and most of its width comes from the trains on it which are not very wide to begin with or its depth i guess the third degree the thing that makes it 3d it is not as good as siren builder it is less good than Better than, oh man, better than Turbo Robo. Better than Raiden Kyojin. Better than the Vic Trailer, we'll say. That's where that guy is gonna end up here. Finally, we got Safari Gao, who's the movie exclusive. It's, because I'm a, uh, I don't know if I'd say it's, I'm, I'm a cheap ass. The, it was, the opportunity was given to me to buy this, so this is technically my version of Tokyo that I have put with. Bill Dio and Diesel Resha for Cho Cho Tokyo with just, you know, white parts instead of regular Tokyo parts. Altogether, I don't think it's as good as regular Tokyo. So, where is that? Tokyo was in B, right? Do we put it? No, we put it all the way up in A. Uh, it's not as good. It is still pretty good. It is not as good as Victory Mars, better than. Better than ten, not not as good as Gokaio, definitely. Oh, he's he's going down. Here we go. Uh, not as good as Spinodio. I'm gonna put him ahead of Hyper Resha Teo, I think. That's where he's going. Safari Go. Now we got Shuri Kenjin, which is the first. Man, the Ninja is was a bit of a disappointment. It's. A series that I have low opinions on. It's one that I tell people to actively, not actively avoid. You know, if you're gonna try to watch everything, watch it at some point. The there's there's it's got good parts to it, but it's like the team isn't great. The villains are especially not great. Sixth is good. The supporting cast is pretty good. The grandpa, the guy from B Fighter, I really like, and the dad who was in 
uh, Rev Ice recently. They were pretty good characters. Uh, that has nothing to do with Shuri Kenjin, though, who is a dude. I like that he's... that the Red... whatever that guy's name was. Whatever the Red's name was, because I know it has a specific name. Uh... It's not Shuriken Maru or something like that. It's something Maru. Shinobi Maru? That seems like that sounds right. Uh, is, you know, controlling the entire thing. It is also, it's got kind of the Gokaio disparate elements where it's a dump truck, a dragon, a car? No, a train, a dog, and Shinobi Maru himself, and the big hat. And it's kind of weird. I like the dragon tailed sword. I guess, but this is all just to say that it's not a super impressive main mech. I again, the the fact that you're it's Shinobi Maru driving it around is better than Trevelyan. Better than Trevelyan, we'll say. I like Bison King a lot more because I mean, Star Ninja has a burger. To transform, he's American, he's got a guitar, he's got Old West-styled stuff. He's got... Rodeo Maru is his guy, I'm pretty sure. He's got the star for the face. Bison King is, like, the... 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 Otomanin Shuriken, or whatever those are called on the top, are... Uh, it makes it look like a... like a... like a Western hat, like, like a cowboy hat, like, come on. We'll go... we'll put the star Eye boys next to each other, he is... Not as good as... No, he's not as good as Battle Fever Robo. Not as good as... Oh, no. No, he's moving down. Here we go. He's falling. It's not as good. Rock... It's a rocky road here. He's at the bottom. He's gonna be at the bottom of A. Sorry to say to Bison King. King Shuri Kenjin I like a lot, actually. I'm gonna... You know what? I'm gonna put King Shuri Kenjin at the bottom of A. Bison King, you're... Tumbling a little more, you're going below Tenkujin, or Ten Rai. Ten Rai Senpujin is that one, yes. King Shuri Kenjin, though, I think is really cool. It's the version, again, I've got the two, so I put them together. I'm, yeah, I'm going to keep telling you about my toys, I apologize. <laughs> Especially from this era onward, I'd, you know, I'd buy stuff as the show is airing most of the time. I spent a lot on Shuriken. Like, maybe it's Sour Grapes for me because I spent over $100 on Shuriken Engine when it was pretty new to get it to me before I knew how to properly buy stuff from Japan and, you know, wait until the series is over. Buy them when they're trying to clear out stock so you can get a mech for, like, 3,000 yen. Which is a pretty sweet deal, although the shipping will always kill you. So, I'm sure there are people that know the pain. Balling on a budget, as you do. Lion Ha'o is really cool uh i like how i like how red he is he is a giant lion fortress it's a toy i don't have but i wish i did uh it's gonna be pretty high on b i think not better than deca ranger robo yeah that looks correct and then we've got Ho'o Shuri Kenjin, which I felt like I had to put in here, because it is technically a combination of the three mechs, even though it is mostly just Shuri Kenjin sitting inside uh, a big lion Ha'o fortress with the Bison King guns, like the Bison King legs as giant guns, which, honestly, that's that's really good. <laughs> and you've got the, the, what is it, Chozets? Aka Ninja on top there? Uh, so it's like, it's Shinobi Maru driving Shuri Kenjin, driving the Lion Ha'o Fortress with another guy standing on top of it. It's way too many levels. It's completely ridiculous. And I'm, honestly, I'm putting it above Voltaurus. So, even though I'm smack-talking, like, a series that I, <laughs> like, I really like Tokyuji, but the mechs aren't ranking as high as the Ninja mechs, which is crazy, because I, I started this by saying, oh, I guess my tune has changed. I didn't even know how much I liked Ninja. It's actually the best series ever, quite frankly. So, start watching Ninja. Don't mind that Kyoimon is basically the only bad guy for most of the series. Uh, I even like Gekiatsu Daio. Like I said, even though it's a mech that doesn't have a lot of connection to the rest of the mechs, you can also put Gekiatsu Daio into Lion Ha'o, which I'm not going to rank separately because it's barely any different. 
Uh, it feels more right with Shurikenjin anyway. It is a six-piece mech as well, which is pretty uncommon, where all six members of a team kind of come together for their own mech and not combine two different mechs. Where is he going, though? Is he He's a pretty high B, I think. Gekiyatsu Daio is pretty good. It's better than normal Shurikenjin, I think. But how much better? Better... Oh... Delta Mega... No... Not better than Delta Mega, not better than Alvareno. Not better than GoBuster Lyo. Better than... No, better than Davis Hyper, we'll say. That's where we're going there. Okay, so... Juoger is a series that I skipped out on all, on all the mechs that I'm kind of disappointed I did. Regular, no, regular Juo King is not good. It is absolutely a block. I understand that's part of the aesthetic of it. It feels kind of lazy. It's got the weird, it's got the face, it's got the face and the lips. It's a low C. It's better than Magic Legend almost on principle, I'd say, just because it it kind of combines the the blocks stack on each other. I think the aesthetics of Jewel Wild are a lot better. I'm not, even though, you know, I'm not a gorilla guy, this is one of the first ones with a gorilla face in the chest, at least. I'm not going to put it too much higher. I, I think that, like, the horned helmet is good, too, of course. He's got a gun. Not as good as Cyrender, I'd say. Nah, he's a bit better than Cyrender. Let me put it. Wild Duo King. Probably isn't even going to break B. I don't know if I even like it as much as regular Duo Wild. It does, like, the mechs are starting to look a bit better, like, a bit more robust. With, you know, it's kind of like the Chotokyo principle of if we add enough stuff on there... It'll, you know, it'll actually take a shape that looks pretty good eventually. It's better than Gosei Ultimate, but not as good as Live Robo, I'll say. Tosai Juo is also kind of there. Like, you're almost cheating with uh, Cube Rhino is the, like, the tank or the lorry or whatever you want to call it, really. So it's not all cubes, which is different enough, at least, but it's still not better than... Duo Wild. It's better than Shinkeno. Not as good as Gosei Ultimate. Now, Wild Tosai King is better, I think. You do finally start. It takes nine blocks. But you're finally starting to get somewhere. This does go into B. I like that the... The big... I, you kind of call it a sword. The thing that you stick into the middle of Duo King ends up becoming like a, a pokey weapon on this guy, which goes to show how much the size has changed at this point. Wild Tosai King is going to be pretty high in B, actually. I think this is where the aesthetics finally start to get good. It is definitely better than Safari Go, I would say. Dodakayo is probably the best of the individual mechs it is just one thing and it's kind of boxy and it doesn't seem like it has a lot of playability maybe so i'd call it yeah let's keep it pretty low in b better than gal muscle not as good as magic king yeah that sounds correct to me well tosai dodeca king this i mean it's you, this may be expected. This is definitely an A, because finally you get all ten together. I love that he has, even though he has the sullen expression and the different eyes, he's got a golden face. It looks completely ridiculous. This is almost like Engine OG 12 levels for me of uh, sheer audacity. It's a lot more put together than Engine OG 12. It has a much more recognizable silhouette, so... Potentially, even from that perspective, it's better than Engine OG 12, even though it is only 10 things. I'm going to put him above... Above King Pyramider, I think. Not quite as good as Kakarei Dai Shogun. 
Now we're getting into Q Ren O and Q Ranger. Uh, I Q Ren O is a very weird looking robot. It's got very weird aesthetics to it. Uh, I'd like it. I kind of like it. The lion head, the weird way the lion head looks, I think is kind of what trips me up in it. Again, in terms of it's very broad shoulder, the proportions of it are very weird because you got to fit all five Kutama on it. It's still better than Daikaiyo, I'd say. It's still kind of it sits near the Gosei Great, I think, because it's kind of the same deal where I like the mechs more as they go on and build more things, which kind of endears me to the base forms a little bit more, even if the base forms are kind of weak. Ryuteo, I don't love. Ryuteo is probably a C. Uh, the dragon's weird. The I, it is a, a it's literally a horned helmet, but these horns are a bit unwieldy. They're a bit gigantic. Oh man, uh, it's kind of the same, kind of in the same area. I'm even gonna yeah, I'm gonna keep Turbo Rugger ahead of it. I think put in front of Max Max Ryu O. That's where Ryuteo is going. You take Q Ren O, which is kind of similar to your Hyper Gosei Greats and such. You don't change the helmet on it at all. Like, you don't change the head, which kind of makes it feel like it loses some points for me, which is going to sound absolutely stupid, and I kind of agree. It's not the strongest of a combined form. I like it even less than, you know, than Ruteo. It's, it's basically on the same level as... Wild Duo King, I think. Maybe not even as good. Maybe slightly lower. This is kinda how <laughs> this is kinda how this is gonna end up shaking out. Uh Giganto O I like a lot, though. It doesn't really it transforms into a lot of different things. It's got, you know, a launch base and a satellite and a shuttle. You don't use the launch base, at least in this form, because it all goes that go that all goes to Gutama Gene. But it's still Ho oh, Soldier's a great costume, he's a great character. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the Gigant Boys near each other. I think I like Ho oh more than Gigant Braggio. So that's where he's gonna go. Kitamajin is going right up to S baby. I love the way Kitamajin looks. Uh it's it again, it's to the point of ridiculous. Uh I think he needs to be... I think it will be above Wolkaiser. The thing that holds it back the most, I think, is the kinda not matching blue head star mask face. But you've got 12 Kutama on it. He's got uh, boosters. He doesn't have hands. He has boosters for hands, which I guess is kind of a... Maybe not as great as well. Maybe if they could have did a thing where you can kind of, like, snap the boosters together and they'd look more like a fist, it'd be kind of cool, but unfortunately that isn't what they went with, and this is what we got for Kutama Gene, which is definitely one of my favorites, an absolute top ten or right on the edge of, at least. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, like, nine right there, so good for Kutama Gene. And then they kind of, not ruin it, but it's like Ryan Battler is... It's kind of just like a robot standing up, at least like it doesn't do very much to transform from what I remember. It's it's big and it doesn't really do anything, it doesn't combine with anything else. It is it feels like Saidio a lot to me, but not even as good as Saidio. So it is going between Saidio and Siren Builder. And then we got Kerberios, who Kerberios is it's kind of, I mean, we've seen this quite a few times. You make it blue. What if it was blue? Uh, it's a... The aesthetics are good. I like the dogs on it. I like that it's... I kind of like that it's... I, I like and dislike that it's three different dogs. I guess. It's good and it's not. It's better than Gown Knight. We'll say. Alright, we're getting into the final stretch here. Let's move on to Lupat. Lupin Ranger versus Pat Ranger. Pato Ranger, however you want to call it. Uh, we're starting with 
Pat Kaiser here, which uh, I don't love, really. Uh, the trigger machines are kind of unwieldy looking. It's got the big pink baton, which is only slightly phallic. Uh, the face is good on it, at least. I like kind of the... it's got... I mean, the head is really hidden inside a... Patronichi goes trigger machine, which I, it might be just trigger machine number one. I don't exactly remember the name of it. Uh, it's also kind of small in there. It's a weird looking robot altogether. I don't love Good Striker either, kind of forming the base of everything. It's better than Kanzen Gokaio, I think. That's so that's where I'm gonna put him. That's where he goes. I think Lupin Kaiser looks better. Uh, it all it comes together a bit better, I think. The jets, I guess, are just more inherently robot-y looking than I mean, like the weird giant shoulder pylons with the triggers too on <laughs> Pat Kaiser are very weird looking. Uh, still, I'm not sure it gets out of seat. It's better than Buster Hercules. It's I mean, it's it's. Mostly better than Gunbur O. It has a better silhouette, certainly, than Gunbur O. I think, I mean, silhouette's a, an important thing for me, I think, and we're gonna kinda. <laughs> it's a very weird silhouette robot coming up here. Uh, we got X Emperor Slash, who I think is better than. The thing is, I am. I don't love Lupin X. Patronex, whatever you want to call him. I, he's not a great character in my mind. He's kind of annoying from what I remember, but uh, he's got two trains. He's a train bot. The, like, trigger... The thing is, his gun, which barely looks like a gun, becomes these trains, and you kind of have to deal with this giant trigger on the front of it, and it kind of just looks like a sash on Slash, which is better than Gunner, but I still don't think it's going to get too much higher than a B because of it. It's not... I'm gonna put it even at the bottom of B. I am not even gonna put it at the bottom of B. I don't... You know what? It's not even as good as Lupin Kaiser. It's better than Jewel Wild, better than Max Ruo, better than Ruteo. I'm coming back to my guy Turbo Rugger. He's the gatekeeper and he's not better than Turbo Rugger. Uh, Gunner is even worse, I think, just because you have the Gun ends up being on the stomach, kind of out near the left hand. It's a very awkward place for it. I think I like the hat, the cool tall hat on him. I mean, I've said I like cool tall hats a lot so far, but it's still, it's not great. It's the, 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 the just the gun on the front of it makes it so much worse. And because of that, we're going better than at least Magic Legend. I'm gonna put it above Juo King. You can't beat Flash King, I don't think. Uh, Good Cool Kaiser VSX is a nightmare <laughs> visually. It's very weird looking. It's kind of impressive all put together, I guess. Now, I mean, if you can guess, I wasn't the biggest fan of Lupad as a series. And, but I mean, it was kind of the same thing where it's like, hey, well, you could get. You can get the, all the trigger machines, you can get the Lupin Kaiser, you can get the X Emperor pretty cheap, less than a hundred bucks for, you know, less than 10,000 yen for all of them. And it's like, well, I mean, if I'm gonna have a big combined Sentai mech, that's a pretty good, I mean, with shipping, it was definitely over a hundred, but you know, hindsight, whatever. Uh, this is, God, this is even potentially a D in terms of a combination. They only use it twice in the series. It's very hard to keep it together, at least in the toy form. Like, the feet on it are kept on with very awkward clips. You gotta move it around in a very specific kind of way. At least it doesn't have... At least it doesn't have fists for the chest, so it's a bit better than... We'll call it a bit better than Decabike Robo, I guess. But yeah, Good Cool Kaiser VSX I is a very much love and hate, more leaning towards hate for me. Lupin Magnum is probably the best mech of the series, but it still doesn't rise it up too much, even out of C, maybe. 
Is it even better than Lupin Kaiser? I mean, I guess. It's thematically, it's fine. It's all red. It's a gun. It turns into a big gun, but I don't think that that even gets it higher than... It's less of a cluster bomb than Buster Hercules. Not as good as Giga Rhino, so I, I lied. Congrats to Lupin Kaiser. It's the best mech from Lupin Ranger versus Battle Ranger, a series that... Uh, I don't even want to call it Wasted Potential. It was fine. It's not, you know, Kamen Rider Ghost is a series that I call Wasted Potential. <laughs> that had a concept that was wasted. Cops and Robbers could be a fun concept, and I think they did a decent... They did de They did all right with it. It was fine. It was fine. Let's move on to Ryu Soldier here. Uh, we're starting right off with Kishiryuo Three Knights because, I mean, the difference between regular Kishiryuo and the Three Knights version is not super different. You just get some cool shoulder pads and arm accoutrement, which makes it better. Uh, aesthetically, the Resoldier mechs, I like the kind of Lego-y aspect they were going for with it. Uh, unfortunately, it leaves a lot of extra pieces that you're not using eventually when we get to some of these bigger combinations, which I don't love. I prefer when you use everything. I like, like, you can make fun of Engine OG-12 for being a gigantic mass of monstrous proportions, but there's nothing left out there. Uh, I mean, Kishiro doesn't have that problem. It's probably closer to A than anything here. Does it even, does it beat? Mega Voyager's been sitting atop B for a very long time. I don't think, I mean, this. Is, I'm not saying that as if Kishiro is going to beat Mega Voyager. Uh, I think it's better, yeah, I think it's better than Geek on Hello. I think I could put it right there. Right close to it. Uh, Kishiriro Five Nights, on the other hand, gets a little bit into... It's a bit too much. It gets a bit... It's kind of into Buster Hercules territory, almost, of... Got a little too much guff on it that is actively hindering it. Uh, as a result, I mean, I don't think it's a gigantic step down... It's still in B. We're still gonna put it... Above Mogu Dayo? Above... Mm, Mogu Dayo and Tatsugami Laio are both very clean. Compared to a Time Robo Beta is a lot cleaner. It's better than Deca Base Robo, we'll say. That's where that's going. Just a bit better than Deca Base Robo in B. And now we got Kishiryu Neptune who I think is uh, definitely... like The one thing you could say about the Ryu Soldier mechs is they have a, a sleek look to them. Uh, and I think that's especially true of Three Knights and Neptune here, who... Am I gonna, am I gonna be that obvious and rank the blue one higher than the red one again? Uh, I mean, this is, this is a different thing. You got the, you know, it's the Mosasaurus... Uh, doing most of the thing. I love that the Mosasaurus head opens up and that's where you put the the key, whatever those were called. Full disclosure, I haven't watched all of you, Soldier. I dropped it like 14 episodes in or so, so I didn't even get to see when gold showed up. I apologize. Again, mea culpa <laughs> uh, for all you Soldier fans out there. Uh, so I'm going to be kind of going in blind on a lot of these here. Uh, yeah, I'm fine putting it below Decoration Robo. I think that's fair. I think it's definitely good, but it's not up to the upper wrist of tears. Upper, upper wrist. Uh, Gigant Kishiro I like a lot. Uh, I, even despite stopping watch the series, I did buy the... Uh, whatever, the, the fire mech that helps to make this one, whatever that guy's called, I forget its name, and Neptune. Uh, and it's the current combination I have, and I think it looks good. The only problem is the other... Dinosaurs are kind of all just hanging out near him because, you know, this is a mech that is only three parts. I still think it looked good. It's a good combination. Uh, it's probably... I'd, I'd even put it below King Shuri Kenjin. Yeah, this is bottom of A, I think, for me. I like the big shoulders. Anything with shoulder cannon-esque things I'm gonna be a big proponent of, but there's a lot left on the table at this point. We got Yoku Ryu O, who's the Ice Pterodactyl, which I think it's probably the best pterodactyl. 
I mean, it's, you know, you're really only going up against <laughs> Killer O and Teraideno, which Teraideno didn't get too much higher than B, but uh, Yokoriyu O is much like Kishiri O Neptune. I think it's a very clean, a very stylish mech. Uh, I don't love that it's an egg, <laughs> or like that it, its main form is egg, I think. That's kind of weird, ice egg. There's probably an arc about that as to why that's important. Uh, I'm putting it above... I'm putting it above Goraijin, but below Gigan Bragio, I think. All the the Kishiryu boys up at the top of B is a good place for them, I think. Uh, King Kishiryu, I don't, I don't like. Uh, he, I mean, I understand that most of the the gimmicks, the keys, I can't remember the name of them. The the small little knight guys that look like dinosaur heads when you fold them over. Uh. They're meant to, you know, like, they're holding a sword, they're holding a weapon, so one side of the head is kind of going to be taller than the other. But just, like, with the yellow on it, it looks like it's wearing a snorkel. This one does, and that bumps it down a bit for me. Haven't seen this guy in motion, that also knocks some points from it, and I don't own the toy or anything, so... Uh, this absolute bias coming out for King Kishiryu o here, who is definitely a C, better than Killer O... Ah, uh, I'm gonna finally give Shinkano a win and put something behind it. I mean, we've put a bunch of stuff behind Shinkano, but not anything specific, really. Uh, and then we've got Kishiri Eugene, who is, I guess, just the black and gold version of Kishiri U Oh, I don't know, again, what its deal is, really, but I like the look of him, certainly. Is it good enough for A? Is it good enough to put... I'm gonna put him above... Mega Voyager, so there's a nice little space out in between the top of B. Consistently good mechs in the series, I'd say. Uh, it's, it's one that I'm going to revisit eventually, soon. Soon-ish, probably. I mean, I, Lord knows I don't have a ton left to watch. So, New Soldier will be back on the menu at some point, and Kishiri Eugene is, like, he's got, like, at least with Kishiri Uo, he's got the kind of, like, you know, he's got the face, the sullen expression, or whatever. Uh, and Kishiri Eugene does not. He's got the visor, and I think a mouth plate from the <laughs> small picture that I'm looking at here. Which is always a plus, it's always gonna win. Black and gold always looks good. Top of B. Top of B for that boy. B for that boy. Alright. Now we're getting into Kira Major, a great series. I, I don't know if I'd call it an underrated series. I feel like it doesn't get talked about as often in terms of like these fun series like a like a Tokyuger is fondly remembered I think Kira Major is that maybe even more uh I like Kira Majin. uh I think that it starts off as Land Mage and we will be grading Sky Mage but not Land Mage because Land Mage it's it's very much the Three Knights principle where Land Mage is just Kishiro without a shoulder piece and a face or not a shoulder piece, a chest piece and a face, uh, and is holding one of the mechs as a sword. Uh, I still think it's good. It's a very tiny toy, which I think does hold it back. Like, among, like, I don't think I mentioned it. It's been two hours at this point, but Sun Vulcan Robo, very small. Daidenjin, very, very small toys compared to kind of the stuff even, like, the later, the latter half of the 80s are used to the latter half of the 80s all the way up to <laughs> here we you know here with Kira Majin from 2020 when this series was uh it's still a B it's a low B it's better than Magic King not better than Magic King not better than Dotakayo better than Gal Muscle we'll say that's where it's going uh, Sky Mage I'm putting in, I don't want to say it's as a lark, because it is an official combination, even though they only use it maybe twice in the series. It's not very often. I like that you can combine two small mech pieces to make this t small mech with a helicopter head. I think Sky Mage is very charming. <laughs> is it charming enough to put it up? It's a, man, well, is charming going to make it rank higher than actual mechs? It's not good enough for A because of that. Like, I'm looking here, it's not going to beat... You can't put Sky Mage above Gokaio. You can't put it above, like, some of the... Some like V-Rex is a real... It's better than Cho Tokyo, maybe? And I say that, and I look, and it's like I see Daiboken there, and I see 
<laughs> Alright, it's not... I'm putting my foot down. It's not as... It's better than Engino. That's where Sky Mage is going. Better than Engino, I'll say. Smog Jokey, I really like. I... God, I might put Smog Jokey all the way in S. Because it is so many things that are specifically up my alley. Like, S is absolutely a bias tier, and you have a train that turns into a dinosaur that is mostly purple, and the purple is clear plastic. This could not be more up my alley. I mean, it's it's not... I, I wouldn't even... Go, no, it's not disappointing. Disappointing is not, definitely not the right word. It is how I much prefer the mech to be, like, when it's out, when it's, you know, I've got it, I've, I've got a Smog Jokey, and it is out as Smog Jokey, because I, you know, I bought the... <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there when we get there, but it's, uh, you, you'll probably know where I'm going in, in a second here, but I'm, I'm putting it at the bottom of S. Smog Jokey is really good. It's a bit simple. I guess maybe that's what I'm going for in, in terms of, instead of disappointing, it's simple compared to many of the mechs on here engineering wise because it's just two trains but it's also a train that's a dinosaur and is purple uh we've got king express which i really like i don't think it's as good as smog jokey but king express is an a you do have a giant chainsaw on one of its arms which is wonderful with the way that's you know the smog jokey trains work out here. Uh, it's got a cool face, it's got a visor with the lips, which is a combination you don't get too too often. Uh, where in A is this boy going? Not better, not better than Die Voyager, definitely. Uh, not better than, I'm gonna say, Ground. I'm gonna put it above St. Kaiser, I think. Because as simple as the toy is, I really like it. And I like that they give you the option here, like I said, for all for all the Smog Jokey fans out there like me, uh, they make King Express Zabune here with the other train that's a shark that I think was a movie toy or something like that. But this is this is my preferred form for this toy because I get to keep Smog Jokey uh, out and about, but I don't think it's as good as normal King Express. I like the face. The face is a bit more extreme, I guess. Uh, and it's more, like, color consistent because it's all... Like, you lose the black and purple to clash with the white and red, and now it's white, red, blue, basically, with, I guess, the splash of purple in the chest still there. Uh, and, and still kind of the yellow on the sides. It's still close, though. And I... Do I call it even an A? I think that King Express is a boon. I'll put it above... Below... Below. It's above the Rear Soldier Max. It's the top of A for King Express Zabune right now. That's how I feel about it. Next, we got Gigant Driller, Gigant Driller, however you want to pronounce it. I mean, this is like the fifth Gigant, and I've been saying Gigant the entire time, so. Uh, this guy's kind of wide for my tastes, and. The combinations stop here for Kira Major as well, so this is very much its own mech, not really in service of anything else, which I don't love. Uh, it's still orange, and I do like an orange mech, but is that enough to push it up to B? It's still pretty... Uh, it's kind of awkward looking. I don't have this one, so I can't say that I you know looked at the toy in my hands and went, wow, that's cool. He's got a claw arm. The, like, the drill tank itself is kind of weird because it's got, like, a grabby claw, too. I, I, yeah, the more I'm thinking about it, he's not as good. But, oh man, am I dropping him that far down in C? I'm, it's, I saw Geki Toja and I was like, it's not as good as Geki Toja. So, that's where I'm putting it then. And then finally we have Grateful Phoenix, who is fine, I will say. It, this is pretty much a middle-of-the-road mech for me. Again, it's a disappointment that most of these mechs don't combine in Kira Major. That's probably the weakest point of them in my mind. 
especially when like Grateful Phoenix is like a spaceship in a phoenix. So it's kind of almost Gosei Ultimate levels of boring. Uh, I mean, it's way more vibrant than Gosei Ultimate, at least. I'm not ranking it that low. Uh, so it's still not super impressive to me. It didn't make a ton of an impact. It's not better than Sampujin. It's not better than Max Magma. Definitely not better than Mega Winger. I'm going to put it below Live Boxer in B, I think. Which I would assume would put it near the middle of the pack, which I think is where it deserves to be. I don't have the numbers in front of me. Uh, okay, so... Now we've got the Zenkaiger mechs. We're very much nearing the end here. With only 2 and 2.1 series left here. Zenkaio Juragaon is not good. It is not a good main mech. Nor is Vrumagene, which we'll get to. This is tapping close to D, I think. Like, the way that the the mechs are weirdly spindly looking, the toys at least. The com Like, the way that they combine is kind of unique where they come together, but like you can... It's at the expense of like the... Like, turning... Juran and Gaon into like the lion and the dinosaur forms look so bad, <laughs> and the the, the you, you put them together and it's really not that much better. This is low. This is a lower than Tetra Boy. I'm gonna say, man, Tetra Boy ended up on with the short end of the stick. I think here he's <laughs> man, Tetra Boy's not that bad, and he's pretty. He ended up kind of low here. Uh, Maybe that just goes to show the curse of being early on, who's to say? Because, I mean, yeah, a lot of these Turbo, Robos, Great Titan, those guys, they've been all kind of clustered together for most of this here, but it's just how the cookie crumbles. I, I cannot rank Vrumagene any higher. They, I think they got to be even next to each other because it's just, it's, it's not good. They're not good mechs. I had no desire to buy them because they don't look great. I, If only to make Zenryoku Zenkaio with the thing, but it, like even then, that looks like a very unwieldy toy. Big, good cool Kaiser VSX vibes from it. No, you know what? I'm even... Good cool Kaiser VSX is... These guys are going right to D. That's where they're going. Unfortunate to say for Sentai's 45th anniversary series, but they're going right down there. Uh, Tukayo is better? Aesthetically, it's still very weird. Like, the crocodile ship that Two Kaiser has, the super deformed brothers being a big part of it. Uh, it's got good... I think the aesthetics of both the katana, which this one is, and the Ricky form, which we'll get to, are... I think they're fine. Like, the helmet's definitely better than... You know, not to dump on Shinkeno more, but yeah, I'm gonna put him above Shinkeno, I think. I still think that's good. And... Uh, Katana is not as good, I think. Uh, I like the gun on him. I like the O-Ranger aesthetics. I like that O-Ranger got a call-out as, like, a major form when, you know, Shinkenger is obviously popular. O-Ranger is, it's, it had a lot of toy sales, definitely, but it wasn't a popular show, and it's not a terribly good show. Uh, this is still... Maybe I gotta move... Katana up a little more because it's still definitely better than Shinken O. Better than Tosai Juo. Yeah, better than better even than Gosei Ultimate, I'll say. That's where that guy's going. Zenkaiju O is an interesting thing, because I definitely like the like the Dragon Caesar armor look the, you know, Kaiju form of Zenkaiser more than this kind of weird amalgamation of V-Rex and Dragon Caesar. It's kind of awkward. I'm Like, for some reason, I don't know why the toys were designed so awkwardly for this series. It's very weird, and I still don't think Zenkai Juo is going to get out of C here. 
I don't even know if it's better than Tukayo, really. I'm gonna give Killer O a win here. It deserves some win. It is slightly better than Zenkaiju O. That's not true, because I had Killer O and I wasn't super impressed with it, and I, had, and I have Zenkaiju O. So, a little bit better. A little bit better than King Kishiru O. That's where he's going. Zenryoku Zenkaiyo is good in theory, I think. The, it is another, it becomes, like, it's a CG abomination only in the series. There's, they didn't make a proper suit for it, which definitely docks at some points. I want to like it. I want to like Zenryoku Zenkaiyo. I feel like the weapon that they give it is also very much uh, slapdash put together. It feels like they... They kind of, like a super live robo situation where they went into it not thinking that they would make a big five piece combination, and then they were like, "Well, we can kind of engineer it," but they were stuck with the other four Zenkaio mechs, and it ends up kind of being looking pretty rough as a result. And I think that as a result, it's not even as good as it's slightly better. Better than Tokyo Rainbow, at least, I guess. Yeah, it's better than Tokyo Rainbow. I do think Don Zenkaio... I guess now, yeah, technically this is a Don Brothers mech, I guess. So we're getting into Don Brothers here. Don Zenkaio is at least better put together than the Zenkaio mechs. It looks... I guess, man, should I put the... No. The, like, the, the, the Zenkaio form that uses Zenkai Juo as a half, that's not, that wouldn't have ranked much higher anyway. Uh, Don Zenkaio is, I guess, only on here because it's a Don Brothers mech, because it was the first mech for the first 12 episodes of Don Brothers or whatever it was. It's still based on a bad concept, but it's the best version of that, because it's, I mean, it's two different shades of red, and it's not super good reds, but the head is fine. I'm gonna put it above Dagoyo, I think. Don Oni Taijin is going pretty high up. It might break S. It's got really good aesthetics. It's a gigantic toy. It, it alone is taller than most combinations of mechs, most like three-piece combinations that I have at least with the sword shoulders. It's a very imposing figure. It fits together well. It's got decent articulation, but also, it, you know, they're, they are making a new version of it where the skirt flaps can move so it can actually sit down, like on the box. But Dononi Taijin is... Ooh, is it better than Gingayo? Is it better than Great Five? I'm going to put it above Great Five, I think. Dononi Taijin is a very good-looking mech, and I... We'll probably keep it that way, I think, because we've got combinations coming, and the combinations are kind of like a hat on a hat, you know? It's like you've got a great base, and you're kind of not doing much to improve it with the additional pieces. Uh, Tora Dragon Jin, Tora Dragon Jin, whatever you want to call him here. Uh, I had said before that I don't love Jiro. Uh, the purple is not saving this one for me either. I mean, it is mostly gold. He's got kind of cool sunglasses. The design is kind of weird for me, I think. I don't know if it's going to break out of C even. No, because it's got a good silhouette, which I value. It's not going to get too much higher than... You know, it's better than Super Turbo. It's better than Go Rider GT. Better than Time Shadow. Better than Grateful Phoenix. Not better than Grateful Phoenix, we'll say, so low B, low B here, this guy. Then we've got Toradoro Onitaijin, which is kind of, like I said, it's a bit, uh, I mean, they don't have a proper suit for this one either, so it's kind of a bit of a mess. Design-wise, you only see it in CG, which is not always my favorite. I'd much prefer a dude in a suit. It's still better than Zenryoku Zenkaiyo. But it's in terms of it being a B, I'd put it in the general area of not as good as better than Shuri Kenjin, we'll say. Not as good as Seiku O. And then 
I don't think that it's much better. Torodoro no Taijin Kiwami. Which there is also a uh, Palanquin Phoenix version of regular Dono no Taijin, but it is not, I did not put it on the list. I probably could have. This is a bit better, I guess, because you get the extra gold in there. You do have the... It's still not super... I, I'm only going to put it above Seikuo, really. I'm not going to mess around here. <laughs> it's only going above Seikuo. That's it. And then, the yet-to-be-released, but we have seen the images here. We've got King Oger from the new series, Osama Sentai King Oger. And I think that I've only seen the episode where the Danoni Taijin head version of this mech is the newest episode that has come out to date this again. So we have seen the mech in action. It was CG. It's still very good aesthetically. I got pretty high hopes. It's made up of 10 pieces, uh, most of which are not super... Like, all the auxiliary ones, like the ant is just part of the sword, I think, which isn't super great, but I still think the aesthetics of it are very good. I think even A tier. Uh, I like bugs. Who doesn't like bugs? He's a bug boy. And... Let's just go ahead and put it I think, I think, I think, above Bill Dio, I think. That's a solid A for the next mech of the 47th Super Sentai series. Alright, well, let's do a quick, quick once over here, see if anything needs to be moved around. Let's start at the bottom here. start at the bottom see if anything that there's anything out of place here I'm just gonna I'm sure everyone's screaming at their televisions their phones their a Google Glass telling me what needs to be moved what I did wrong here like the once over does bio robo deserve better now that it's you know near the near the bottom of sea I still don't love it aesthetically am I overrating turbo ranger robo should it be lower for turbo robo or whatever even it's called I'm I'm moving this guy down. Flash King deserves a little better. I still don't love... It's the feet and it's the tiny head going down there. Let's see here. As I'm just... Am I overrating Giga Phoenix any... Because I keep... Giga Phoenix has been kind of sticking to my craw a bit here. And I think... I can't rate Live Robo that, ro that low. So I'm putting it there. Live Robo deserves a bit better. It's better than Sirender. I'm gonna put it above... I'm gonna make him switch places, I think. I think that's where Live Robo deserves to be compared to... And I'm even gonna put it above... Gigant Driller. I'm even gonna put it above Gekitoja. That is as far as it will go. That is as far as Live Robo will go in my mind. Uh, is B anything weird in B here? Live Boxer is... Yeah, in a, in a still pretty good place, I think. Uh, Daimugen. Is Daimugen out of place in B? I don't think so. Does Time Robo Beta deserve any better? Did I rate Sky Mage too high? Is Lion Ha O to this? I mean, B is a is a gigantic tier. It's got the most in it, so it's tough to even think of where to go with these here. A is anything does anything need to move around in A? Battle Fever Robo still respectable of Battle Fever Robo to end up. I call I thought it was gonna be a low A near the end, it ended up being a middle A, which is congrats to that guy, Plezuo. Kibadayo was the top of A for basically the entire run. Good for it, because it deserves it definitely. And now the top here. We gotta determine King Super Best, of course. So I'm gonna take Five mechs, like any Sentai team, for King Super Best here. And am I going to put it all on... Like, can I only have one combined form? Can I only have one base mech? A base, a secondary, a combined form, a base? Well, a base is in the first one, excuse me. Uh, a first mech, a secondary mech, a combination, a base form, and an auxiliary, really. 
me. Or no, well, auxiliary would be secondary, I guess. A two combination, a three combination. We want to get a lot of boys in here. So right off the go, off the bat, the best main mech in my eyes is Muteki Shogun. That is indisputed in my mind. He's got... You're not going to get a better combination of five robots. I think... For a combination of two robots, we're going to put Ultimate Daibouken in there, because it is technically two robots with Daibouken and Daitankin. It's a great mech. Certainly one of my favorites. I'm going to count Kyutama Jean as a combination of three mechs. <laughs> I, think it, I think it deserves that. I think that's fine. Uh, I'm going to put... Obviously, because it was the top here, this guy has to go, Grand Liner has to go in there as the best base. I am counting it as a base because you could fit other mechs inside it. Which, I mean, you could kind of... No, yeah, that's how I want to... That's how I'm going to portray that. And the best not main secondary mech, I guess, Dragon Caesar is there. It's right there. But I'm going off the board, baby. I'm putting Diesel O up there. My guy Diesel O is going as second best, like best second mech, not main mech of the series. I think it deserves it. I'm I pulled all the way from A. There were all these other S options. I could have put Dragon Caesar in there. Uh, I could put Wool Kaiser in there. Ooh, do I put best sixth mech? I guess to kind of round it out. That's where Dragon Caesar goes. He's the sixth. Dragon Caesar is your sixth in there. So nobody can get mad at me for not putting Dragon Caesar up at the top. These are, then, these I will not put in any particular order of King Super Best. They are the six best Sentai mechs. Sentai mecha, Sentai machines. In my poisonal opinion. Alright, and time for a little postscript now. Here I am, I'm speaking to you from the future after most of the editing has been done here. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you got this far, if you skipped around, I do not mind. As long as you... My opinions, frankly, do not matter, so I'm happy that you took the time to look at some cool robots, some cool designs. I know that there's one or two that I missed altogether, probably a little bit more than one or two. I know that, what is it, Tenku Shinken O? It looks dumb. It probably would have ranked lower than Daisu Jin with Dragon Caesar on his head, because that is almost the same principle, and it looks potentially even more dumb. But, uh, yeah. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your opinions down in the comments below. Feel free. Let me know what I missed. I want to hear what your favorite is. I want all the smoke, quite frankly. I can take it. And I'd like to just uh, put some credit to the Ranger Wiki, the Senta, Super Sentai Wiki, that all of these lovely images came from, most of them, 90% of them. Uh, additional credits will be in the description. And... For all of you out there in TV land, I bid you adieu. I cannot give you these three hours back. <laughs>